start. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. This is the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation um, simulation. We are simulating how a common federal government for the people of Israel and Palestine could make peace, could resolve really most of the issues between the Palestinians and the Israelis based on a constitution, based on fairness, based on uh, a common federal government for the entire area, Gaza, the West Bank, Israel, and Jerusalem. Specifically today, we are going to be dealing with the um, events, the unfortunate events that took place after October 7 and the current situation. And we are gonna be speaking about how to resolve um, the current situation based on the model that we are proposing, which is a federal government. Some people have asked me, well, what's the point, Joseph? Um, you are not the government and, and, and the votes and the discussion you will have today is only symbolic. That's true. It is only symbolic, but it gives a better understanding uh, to the audience and to the people who will be watching this and the people who will be viewing it when, when they view the recording. And we have a lot of people watching the recording. What we are saying is that if we had a common government, if we had a federal government today, or if we had it a year or two years from now, probably the events of October 7 and the subsequent events would not have taken place because we have already saw the seeds of peace. We would have given hope to the people of Israel and Palestine, and we will uh, have created a mechanism of engagement of hope for the people of Israel and Palestine. My name is Joseph Avisar. My email is josephavisar at gmail.com. You can read our constitution at ipconfederation.org. You can read questions and answers. And I would be very interested in your comments. The website is in Arabic, Hebrew, and English. And um, the most interesting part of the website is the um, constitution itself, which tells you specifically what is our vision for peace and how this common government, a common federal government could be created and what will be the relationship between the government of Israel and the Palestinian governments and uh, how it will make peace. So please read the constitution at ipconfederation.org and send me uh, questions, emails, comments to josephavisar at gmail.com. Today we have a simulation. We are conducting an another simulation in relation to the existing reality that took place after October 7 and the existing reality today. Uh, our guest is uh, Suzanne Molner. Uh, Suzanne Molder has worked in cross-cultural setting for over 25 years, aiding vulnerable populations in Africa, Thailand, and the Middle East, and the United States. In the past 19 years, she has focused on serving Palestinian refugees in refugee camps throughout the Middle East. Her first exposure to Palestinian refugee camps occurred during her time living in Beirut, Lebanon. Suzanne is the founder and the executive director of Beirut and Beyond, an organization that provides financial support to in initiatives led by Palestinian refugees and helps to amplify their stories. Additionally, she has a personal perspective that allows her to effectively explain the complexities of the Middle East to American audience, possibly to other audience as well. Um, we have simulations all the time. Our, we invited many, many people to the simulations. And uh, we've been doing these simulations for several years. I've been doing them in person too, mostly to organizations and students. Uh, and I wanna thank all the previous participants 
to the simulations. Uh, you see a list of all of them. Noam Chomsky appeared twice in the simulation and he subsequently recorded a video that um, uh, supports our vision for peace. And um, for those of you who are interested, you can see it on YouTube. His uh, endorsement of the IPC, Israeli Palestinian Confederation. I started to use uh, the word federation more because we are, I am now speaking about the issue has been clarified to me as well that we are really speaking about a federal government, not a, a, a um, confederation between two governments. These governments, the Israeli and the Palestinian governments, are unable to agree on anything really, and they are not able to agree on creating another government. The common government that we are proposing would be independent of the Israeli and the Palestinian government that will be created separately and independently, and if necessary, despite the Israeli and the Palestinian governments who are, again, I will re I'll repeat, failed governments have not given the people of Israel and Palestine peace or security. They failed on all levels, peace and security. And we've seen it time and time and again. We have invited other peoples to participate on, and we it did not get their response or some of them refused to participate. And I would ask them, what is their vision for peace? Why are they afraid to confront what we are, what we are proposing? And I think that's a, a, a serious question to ask. You know, you can condemn one side or another, but when a peace proposal is being made and we have people that are supportive of it, not all of these people are supportive, by the way, but if we have many, many people who are supportive of it, and if you are interested in giving security to your own people, to the people who you, who you support, then you should be able to respond to our invitation to participate in the simulation and be open and frank and tell us what's wrong with it. That's what I'm asking today. And I've been asking in, in uh, uh, other simulations in the past. Um, on November 26th, we will have Mitchell Plitnik. He is the president of Rethink Foreign Policy. On um, December 10th, we will have Rebecca Ruth Gold. She is a political science professor. Um, and on December 17th, we will have these three individuals present their own version of a two-state solution so that it's clear we are not against any other solution, including the two-state solution. If the people of Israel and Palestine require a two-state solution, the common government is probably the best vehicle. The common federal government is probably the best vehicle to create the two-state. The parliament members in the common government will be the representative of the people of Israel and Palestine, and they will be the people who are elected and will have the authority to create two states if two states are necessary. Me personally, I am against the idea of a two state, but I am not proposing that the federal government, the parliament would not be against it. They can vote the way they wish if they feel that two states is necessary. Here we're going to have three individuals, uh, Mona Ali Khalid, Nasir Abushi, and Alon Burstein, presenting their own vision of two states. And we will be voting on that. And I'm inviting all of you to participate in this and the previous and all the other simulations to discuss this. So what I'm trying to show you is the flexibility that a federal government gives to both the Palestinians and the Israelis and even if there is a two-state solution, it does not mean the dismantling of the common federal government. You can still have a common federal government while there is two states. You can still have a common federal government if there are no two states. 
the common government is a, a good, sorry, a good mechanism to make peace. Today, simulation will take about 120 minutes. We will have several segments and, and we will have the speakers respond to each and every segment. And then we will have a conversation with our speaker. Like I said, the focus today is on the situation in Gaza. So I anticipate we will have a lot more uh, questions and comments. I usually ask people not to comment, but because we are proposing a specific resolution to the immediate crisis in Israel Palestine, we will have a lot more um, um, questions and comments, and I will be a lot more lenient about comments because I understand the uh, the the emotional and the um, effect that this situation has on all of us. Uh, I'm usually a lot more stricter about comments, but today we will allow more comments. But please keep your comments short and to the point and not have everyone make a huge um, um, speech about the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We are trying to focus on the uh, on the resolution or a solution to the immediate crisis. Uh, we have a video that explains our vision for peace. I'd like to play it. It's two and a, two minutes, I believe, or two and a half minutes. Please bear with me. Thank you. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has endured for generations. And instead of time healing the wounds, it's only caused the anger to fester and the violence to grow. But what if there was a way to alleviate the tension? Something that may not outright solve every problem, but at least create a forum that encourages a peaceful compromise. Welcome to the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, a common third government between the Israeli and Palestinian citizens, specifically designed to foster peace, tolerance, and economic prosperity between the two nations. Here's how it works. First off, both Israel and Palestine will keep their respective governments. Israelis Knesset and the Palestinian National Authority will remain unchanged. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, IPC, will be a third entity acting as a unifying agent between the two. The IPC will comprise 300 parliament members elected from 300 districts in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Above them will preside a president and vice president, one Israeli and one Palestinian. In order for the IPC to pass a law, it will require a 55% majority from its Israeli representatives, as well as a 55% majority from its Palestinian representatives, thereby preventing either side from monopolizing the legislature. Of course, the IPC won't undermine the political power of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government. At any time, Israel or Palestine may veto a law passed by the IPC. If neither side vetoes, the law is passed and the two nations are another step closer to resolution. Please help us make this a reality. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. We might speak different languages, but we all mean the same thing. So we are going to simulate what we've just seen on, the, um, on that video in specific relation to what's happening in Israel, Palestine, or Israel, Gaza, really is including um, what happened after October 7 and subsequent. Uh, we usually conduct a uh, survey before the simulation and then after the simulation, I'd like to conduct it right now. Do you support a common federal government for the people of Israel and Palestine to make peace? Please uh, vote right now. Okay, five more seconds to vote. Okay, uh, see more people are voting. Okay, can you publish the vote, please? All right, they, the results of this vote is 37 out of 41 voted yes, which is 
and four out of 41 voted no, which is 10%. We will conduct the same survey at the end of the simulation after we discuss the current issues and hopefully we will see a movement, hopefully in favor of a common federal government. But thank you for participating in this uh, survey. Um, our purpose is to show how a common government could make peace, how it could solve the current crisis. Um, we are not proposing an Israeli government or a Palestinian government. We do not follow the uh, Israeli or the Palestinian narrative. We expect to have a rigorous discussion, but let's be respectable to each other. Let's be respectful to each other, not uh, personally attack. There is no need to personally attack uh, each other. Um, Suzanne Molner is not a representative of the IPC. She was inv invited to stress test the IPC. Um, and I had a meeting with her. She decided on which issues she wants to discuss, which are obviously the current issues. Um, and we will have her uh, express her opinions regarding our formula for peace. We are not claiming exclusivity. We invite other organizations to give us their uh, uh, formula for peace, and we do not um, oppose the Israeli or the Palestinian government, or I should say the Israeli and the Palestinian governments making their own peace um, uh, agreements uh, we are constitutionally prohibited from undermining those agreements between the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. But given their last uh, 75 years of uh, history, we doubt that they will be able to reach an agreement. And uh, really the reason for our existence as, the, as proposing a common federal government is because of their uh, failure to agree their failure to make peace and protect their own people. We will ask Suzanne Molner to judge our plan not based on perfection. That's not fair. Nothing is perfect in this world, including a peace proposal for Israel and pa Palestine. We will ask uh, 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 Suzanne Molner to, to, and all of you, and all of you, we are asking you all, of, all to judge our plan based on the alternative. Um, so if you find something, you know, uh, obscure or something that is wrong with our formula for peace, uh, that's really not the fair criteria to judge our plan for peace. Our the fair criteria, and what we ask you is to judge us based on what's the alternative, not based on what's perfect. Uh, we are demonstrating how a common government could make peace and how it could pass legislation that both sides, the Israeli and the Palestinian governments, will have no choice but to accept our peace proposal or peace legislation. Now, there are many, many legislations that we can demonstrate, we can show, and we show it in each and every simulation. Today, I think we are gonna be dealing with two, specifically on the issue of what's going on right now. Uh, so, so that you know what you see is the tip of the iceberg, and we ask you to look at the big picture, and if you want to know more examples of legislation that this common government could pass, send me an email. I will, I will, I will uh, respond to you and, and demonstrate to you that there are many, really every issue in Israel-Palestine, including the refugees, including Jerusalem, including the occupation could be resolved and we could find a mechanism to resolve it by way of a federal common government if we if if there is a if we wish it to be if there is a, a a willingness it could be done but it has to be done in good faith 
Uh, we are simulating today. Uh, so it's not a lecture, even though, like I said, um, we are going to have a lot of more leeway because of the issues that are involved right now and the current war that is going on right now. In order for us to conduct this simulation, we need to have assumptions. We are, we are asking you to make the following assumptions that the IPC, the Israeli Palestinian Confederation, had an election for the whole area of Israel Palestine, meaning Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem, from the river to the sea. And we have given an opportunity to the entire population, the entire 14 million people uh, in, in that area, an opportunity to vote. And so you have to assume that an election has been taking place and we had three months of elections and five million people have voted. That's the underlying message in this assumption. If we don't assume that, then the, the, the simulation cannot take place. So you have to assume that 5 million people have voted, that 3 million Palestinians have voted, and 2 million Israelis have voted. You will also have to assume that we elected a president by one and a half million votes. For the purpose of this assumption only, you'll have to assume that me, Joseph, I was elected as president. It makes it much easier for me to conduct the simulation pretending that I am the president. So that you know, I don't ever intend to run for president. I'm not even qualified under the constitution to be president, but for the purpose of this simulation, please assume that I was elected by one and a half million votes. So in this simulation, I am going to pretend, and I'm asking you, all of you, to pretend that five million people voted, the 3 million Palestinians voted, 2 million Israelis voted, 1.5 million voted for the president, and 1.3 million voted for the vice president, a Palestinian lady. We will rotate in, in two years. I will become vice president, and she will become a president. You will also have to assume that 300 parliament members were elected in 300 districts in that includes Gaza, the West Bank, Israel, and Jerusalem. Each district is 47,000 people, okay? These are the necessary assumptions to conduct the simulation. Um, I know that we are now having a huge um, issue in Israel, Palestine, a tragedy going on, and it's hard to assume, but nevertheless, I'm asking you, please make these assumptions. Now, does anyone have any questions regarding the assumption? Susan, uh, or uh, Suzanne, I'm sorry. Suzanne, do you have any questions or comments regarding these assumptions? Or does anyone, have, other, other than Suzanne, do you have any questions or issues or you need clarification regarding this assumptions? Um, Joseph, first of all, I forgive me for my lateness. Um, I'm I just did just get on. I have a standing commitment on Sunday morning, so I got here when I could. But I yeah. I just don't know how viable an election would be, or assuming that 1.5 million people would would vote. Um, I I just don't I don't I don't know how the election would be overseen. I don't know how there would be legitimacy. That's really hard for me to accept as an assumption. Okay. So could you be more specific? Uh, are you saying the you have a hard time that uh, 5 million people would vote? Yeah. I have a hard time believing 5 million people would vote out of what would be their motivation, what would be the legitimacy then how would the election be have international observers 
Like, how would the world see it as legitimate? Okay, you're but raising. You're raising. Is. So I, can I just say, to me, it's obvious that just by the mere fact that we're doing it, and as he said, Mr. President, 30% out of 14 million, 30% is what the, the rate is now in Israel and other countries. So it's reasonable to, to believe that, that that's going to be the turnout, probably much more. And there you go. By having it, by doing it, by being it, that's the legitimacy. We don't need legitimacy because we are the legitimacy. So just presume it. Let's not argue about it. Let's presume it, like he said, and continue with the simulation. Perfect. Perfectly said. Uh, okay, so Suzanne, are you willing to go on with this simulation based on these assumptions? We can go on with the simulation, but I have severe objections to the assumptions, and I won't endorse the assumptions. Okay, so 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 you have objections to them. What are the objections? Uh, like I said, like I, I just don't understand how an election, you can't just say you're legitimate. Like how is the, you know, whether the UN oversees it or not, I have so many questions about how this could possibly work, but I don't want to get hung up here. I want you guys to go ahead with your simulation, but I just don't, I'm not going to just go along with saying that I believe in this assumption. Okay, is your, uh, your objection based on technical issues or is it based on philosophical issues? Both. Okay. Both. Sorry, right. may, I, may I suggest that you just believe us that we presume, we believe in those presumptions. Maybe perhaps we could do a, a poll and if the majority says, yeah, yeah, we definitely uh, are telling you sincerely that we all unlike yourself, believe in those assumptions. So can you then function as what you need to be functioning here today? I right. will function and I will observe and I will give you my opinion. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. Oh. okay good. Um, you know, it's a good idea. Let's have a poll of the people that are participating here. Could you vote yes or no? Do you accept the assumptions? Uh, Dan, can you run the poll? Vote yes or no. Do you accept these assumptions? Okay, give it a few. Okay, publish the vote. 77% accepted the assumptions, 23% are not willing to accept the assumptions. All right, let's go on. Um, and that is, we need now to ask you to participate as either Palestinian or Israeli parliament member in the federal government. I will ask all of you to choose to choose your district and to choose your nationality. Uh, are you Israeli or Palestinian parliament members? Let's start with Palestinian parliament members and I'll show you a map of the area. And I may ask you, what is the area that you uh, represent? Let's start with Palestinian parliament members. Please, if, please vote. Are you, how many Palestinians we have as parliament members? Palestinian parliament members, that we're gonna be voting pretty soon on issue. How many Palestinian parliament members we have? Okay. Um, five more seconds. Okay, uh, publish the votes. We have 16 Palestinian parliament members. And let's go to Israeli parliament members. How many we have? Okay, uh, five more seconds. We have 21. Israeli parliament members. So I'm counting those who voted yes or no as Israeli. It doesn't really matter. As long as you voted, you're either is 
you don't have to vote yes or no. You just, I'm counting all of them. All right. Uh, okay, so we have 16 Palestinian, 21 Israeli parliament members in this uh, simulation. Each of you represent a district. The district is 47,000 people. All right. Our first order of business, now that we assume that we have an election, we assume we have a president, we assume we have a parliament, we need to ratify the constitution. What you see here is the short version of the longer version that is on our website. Uh, Libby, would you be so kind as to read out the constitution? We believe that Palestinians and Israelis are entitled to equal rights under the law and guaranteed human rights and freedom. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation does not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments, nor to abrogate or undermine any agreements between those governments. We recognize the need to work with the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Our purpose is to resolve conflicts and to expand the relationship between Palestinians and Israelis in a fair and equitable manner. We believe in equal rights under the law, guaranteed human rights and freedom for all. We voluntarily give the legislatures and the governments of Israel and Palestine veto power over legislation we pass relating to the domain of control of those governments. We believe in the separation of power between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We believe in the creation of a permanent secular government for all the people residing in Israel and Palestine. We believe in having a separate judicial branch relating to IPC legislation with Israeli and Palestinian judges with a system to avoid biased decisions based on nationality. All right. Does anyone have any questions? At this point, questions. Uh, Suzanne, do you have any questions regarding the Constitution? No. Nope. Does anyone have any questions regarding the Constitution? Ahmed, please ask your question. Good evening and, uh, and good morning, according to your time. Uh, my question is, is yeah, my question is I have doubt about the veto right for the Israeli or Palestinian uh, government. Is this will limitate the parliament or IP or IBC? Because uh, I don't understand the question. Particular... Could you please ask the question? The question is this uh, I have doubt about the uh, veto. Uh, veto power for the Palestinian or Israeli government is uh, is this veto right will uh, limitate or uh, limitate the power of the IBC decisions? Do you get my point? Yes. Are you saying it would the veto? power given to the Israeli and the Palestinian government, would that limit the power of the federal government? Correct? This is the part of the question. And the other part of the question, how to and ensure... So the answer, your first question, the, the answer is yes. It would limit the power of the of the uh, 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 parliament, yes. Yeah, the second question, sir, is um, how to ensure never misuse of this right by both of them? That would be, that's a good question. That would be by passing legislation that neither side could veto. If we pass legislation that would benefit clearly the people of Palestine and Israel and the one government veto it, then the power that we have based on the votes that we got, 5 million people, and the power that we have 
we can um, uh, expose the government that decides to veto legislation that benefits their own people. So our, our power to force reasonable legislation is based on the legitimacy that we receive from the people of Israel and Palestine. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? All right. Hearing no question, let's have a vote. Palestinian parliament members. By the way, you have to ratify this. You are a parliament member. So you need to ratify it just like any other government around the world. If you are a parliament member, you need to ratify the constitution of your government. Okay, so Palestinian parliament members, please ratify. Okay, publish the vote. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members who voted, voted yes. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members, please vote. Israeli parliament members, please vote. Then I don't see the vote. Maybe it's there, but I just don't see it. Okay. Um, Publish the vote. Please publish the vote. Um, so I see 85% of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of this legislation, this uh, constitution to ratify the constitution. 15% voted no. So the 15% who voted no are expelled from the parliament because, and they're not allowed to vote uh, because they are do not accept the constitution. They cannot be part of the parliament. They can still be Israeli or Palestinian citizens, uh, in this case, Israeli citizens, but they are not part of the parliament because they basically do not, they do not accept the constitution. Um, so they are not, they are expelled from the constitution. Let's go to our first order of business, which is granting a veto power to the separate governments. Libby, or Charles, could you please read this? Granting a veto power to the separate governments. The Confederation is the government of the entire population of Israel and Palestine from the river to the sea. We recognize the Palestinian and Israeli governments and are seeking their cooperation to implement our vision for peace by giving them a veto. We will do our utmost to satisfy the essential needs of each government. We are pleading with the Palestinian and Israeli public to understand that while we would like to pass the best legislation possible to improve their lives, under these constraints, a perfect legislation is not possible. We hereby bestow a veto power relating to legislation affecting sovereignty to the following, the government of Israel on issues in which it is indispensable. The Palestinian government governments on issues in which it is indispensable. In the event of changes in governments, the legislation may be amended or repealed. The parliament will decide on indispensability. Vetoes may be bestowed individually or collectively. Does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? Yes. Yeah, hi, Fred. Go ahead. Okay. Um, does this constitution uh, eliminate Israel's constitution? I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Does this constitution eliminate Israel's constitution? What you see here is legislation. It's not part of the constitution. But no, the constitution that you are referring to specifically says, we do not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments, nor to abrogate any under or undermine any agreements between those governments. So they can decide whatever they want between themselves uh, and we do not eliminate the existence of those governments. Okay, but the, the, what government does Palestine have? They don't have a government right now. Okay. 
we there is no requirement for the Palestinians or the Israelis to have a government. The federal government that we are proposing does not stand on the shoulders of the Israeli or the Palestinian governments. It is an independent government. We will we decide who to recognize in this legislation. So if there is no Palestinian government, then we do not have to worry about a Palestinian government. We see the Israeli and the Palestinian governments as obstacles. We do not see them as the uh, foundation for our government. So if the Israeli government is indispensable, we will give it a veto power. If the Palestinian government is indispensable, we will give it a, a veto power. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Gail. Yes. Um, we have a constitution. We're a democratic state, the United States, correct? Correct. <laughs> We like to think so. What's your question? Correct. What is your question? Can you hear me? Yes, Gail. Yes. Can you change the United States Constitution? Can you add or uh, veto something in the United States Constitution or the democracy of the United States? I believe it is. There are provisions for amending the Constitution. It but there requires. Are. But there are. I'm sorry. There, there's not a way that we could add another country. Mexico wants to join us because they like what we present. Can Mexico well, come in? Okay, this you have a question regarding. Yeah, I do. I don't know. What is the what is the question about the legislation that is in front of you? The question I have is: Israel is a democratic state, correct? How are you planning to change that? We're not. Then what are you trying to get at? The we Palestine, are, we Palestine are, has no government. We are proposing creating a common secular government for the people of in Palestine, Israel, that includes the Gaza, the West Bank, Israel and Jerusalem without dismantling the Palestinian or the Israeli government. And another question is, why have you not looked at how this is going to function with Iran, Hezbollah, and all the other terrorist countries? We are. We are okay. actually, that's part of the legislation we are considering today. And how do you work with terrorists? We are the common government for the whole area, and we will pass legislation to make it unlawful to harm civilians, regardless of their nationality or religion. And didn't we Can have I, I have a problem for October 7th? Excuse me, I have a problem calling other sovereign nations terrorist countries. Well, I'm sorry, like, I don't. Like, I lived in Lebanon. Okay, but, but we need, time, we, so we're not here to argue. Language. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Does, does anyone know. have any questions regarding the legislation in front of you? Yes, I, I do, Joe. A uh, couple of things. You know, on the previous uh, motion, we had 15 members of the Israeli parliament just because they did not vote for the constitution, they were dismissed. What happened to the districts and who represents the districts out of which they came from? That's number that's one. A very good, that's, that's a very good question. The person, the next, the person who received the second amount of votes in that district will be the parliament member, as long as he accepts the constitution. My second question, Joe, is this. And instead of uh, having Israeli and 
Palestinian governments? Can we make the constitution reflect, you know, I'm sorry to go back to the constitution, but can we have it reflect that 55% of the districts, regardless if they're Palestinian or Israeli, and those districts represent, similar to the US, they are representative of the number of people within those districts, regardless if they're Israelis or Palestinians. That way we don't really create uh, boundaries, regardless if those boundaries are dependent on the ethnicity or geographic location. It should be based yeah. on population density, wouldn't you think? It, yeah, it is. You're right. The, the Constitution does not create boundaries. It creates districts. The districts will be created based on mathematical formula. Many of the districts will be mixed districts, Palestinians and Israelis together. If you are a Israeli, you could vote for a Palestinian. If you vote, if you are Palestinian, you can vote for Israeli. For same for the president and vice president. At the end of the day, we will have so many Palestinians and so many Israelis elected. They don't have to be the exact number. And out of the numbers that have been elected, you will need 55% of the Palestinian parliament members and 55% of the Israeli mem uh, parliament members, regardless of how many there are. Any other questions regarding this legislation? All right. Um, having no, having, hearing no, uh, uh, no more questions, let's take a vote. Palestinian parliament members, please vote on this veto power. I'm actually going to vote no for that one. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, let's end the polling. 89% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. Let's have the Israeli parliament members vote on this same legislation, please. Do you support the declaration granting veto power? And the polling, 78% of the Israeli parliament members voted to give a veto power to the Israeli and the Palestinian governments in case they are indispensable to this specific legislation. And we decide on whether they are indispensable or not. Indispensable means that we have to no choice but to deal with them. They can block us. If they can block us, we give them a veto power. That's the first legislation regarding the uh, uh, crisis that is going on today. Um, Libby, would you be so kind as to read this legislation that I am proposing will be up to, your, to the parliament. You are the parliament to accept, reject, or amend it. This is the discussion we are gonna have starting today. I mean, we're having today, ending the current crisis. Libby, please. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation proposes resolving the current crisis through the following measures. One, the Israeli and Palestinian governments, including Hamas, will cease fire immediately upon accepting this is called disagreement. disagreement. Two, Accepting all, disagreement. Sides, Go ahead. all sides withdraw their troops near the Israel Gaza border and return to the pre October 7, 2023 lines within 48 hours from the acceptance of this agreement. Three, children under the age of 18 and vulnerable adults to return to their respective governments within four hours, hours of the acceptance of this agreement. And four, full and unconditional exchange of all prisoners within 12 hours of the acceptance of this agreement. And we hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government the Palestinian government and Hamas, and we bequeath upon them a veto power, which may be exercised openly or confidentially directly to the IPC. Does anyone have any questions regarding this 
proposed legislation. Jo Joseph, um, I had a question. In the original one that you sent to email, there was a, um, I think there was a fifth one about the 10 year ceasefire, I think it was, or non or something like that. Correct. Did you, is that one been, why is that, why has that been removed? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, uh, I think it should not have been removed. It was probably something that I wrote and then I wrote another one and I didn't pay attention that it has been removed. Are you proposing that this would be included? I, I would propose it because my fear is that this kind of like, uh, here it is, I put it in the chat box here, what the fifth, the fifth one was. And the reason why I would propose it or include it is because I think that this just says, let's go back to the status quo. And I think that there's an issue with saying, let's just go back to the status quo. The other thing that I mentioned to you in the email was that I think that a big, another mistake is that, and I know you want to be focused and you don't want to make this like controversial with other issues, but there's other issues that are going on like that caused the situation. And that these are areas that are beyond Gaza. The, the focus on Gaza is problematic since I feel that we have to include the pogroms that are going on within the, the Palestinian communities within the Green Line and the, the massacres and ethnic cleansing that's going on in the West Bank right now. So I would like to say that some, something should be included to, to indicate that there has to be, we have to go to the, the roots of that. We have extremists on both sides and we have to treat them equal. We have to have a universal way to treat extremists, whether they be on the Palestinian side, as well as the settler, the Israeli um, Jewish extremist side. Uh, yeah, I told you that that would be a, a, a poison pill that would uh, destroy the, the current purpose. You, we have uh, Israeli and Palestinian prisoners that need to be released immediately. If you load the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict into this, it's not going to be resolved. As you know, we have other legislation to deal with the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but I don't think, I would not be supportive of loading the whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict into this emergency situation that we have right now. But and I'm not even sure about this agreement for 10 years suspension of violence, because I think that's that also my purpose as the president is to to deal with the existing situation in Gaza, Israel, to release the the prisoners on both sides and to create a, a atmosphere of peace. Uh, so personally, now that I think about it, 10 years suspension of violence could be a... I, it's I'm, not viable. I, it's not viable. It's because not viable. While you have an occupation going, a 10-year yes. suspension of violence is not viable. Right. Okay. All right. So... so yeah, I, I, no, I, I agree. If your goal is just to ceasefire, which is the objective, just a ceasefire, complete ceasefire, with the hopes that other other uh, legislation would move forward with the other issues. I guess that would be the goal. Okay, so I removed that. Okay, uh, any other questions? <clears throat> yeah. First of all, do you, be do you believe that uh, Israel will not veto this immediately because that's not what the plan, their plan is? And number two is, um, Maybe number another provision. They, they are not giving a veto power on this, by the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then there may be another item here is to to immediately start uh, seriously considering a solution to to this uh, infinite con conflict you call it, but uh, it's okay. By the way, yeah, that, that's exactly the same thing that. Uh, uh, Nasir proposed, and I, I did. This is an emergency legislation to deal with the current situation. You cannot load the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict into this. 
it's it's good. You don't want four year old children or 13 year old children, Palestinians or Israelis, to wait until the entire Israeli Palestinian conflict is resolved while okay. they're being imprisoned or in uh, by Israel or Palestine. Do you want okay. them? This is why I put it within four hours. We want them released quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right away. So, Susan, I think what uh, Gail meant when she talked about the terrorists, uh, I think she meant on Israel. Israel is the biggest terrorist right now in the Middle East. Can we, can we focus on this? Yes, done. Legislation. Any questions, any comments, any questions regarding this legislation? Susan, do you have any comments or questions regarding this proposed legislation? Uh, I mean, there's nothing right. You don't want to include about the occupation, but this is going to continue with an occupation. Also, I wonder if there needs to be something about uh, resettling Gaza or Israel wanting to resettle, I think that needs to be put in there, that that is not allowed, and that the, the forcible transfer of Palestinians ends and they go back home. At it says that. here, all sides to withdraw to the pre-October 7 lines. But also that the, that the forcible transfer of Palestinians ends, like immediately. Are you voting against this legislation? Um, I'm not voting. I'm here to observe. And I want to, then I can give you options, but that's my concern that it doesn't even address. Okay. Are you against, are you against, are you against this legislation? But maybe just edit. Um, just well, let, 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 let's, let's ask Susan, are you against this legislation? I'm not against it, but you have got to put something about the forcible transfer of Palestinians. You've got to. Okay, like what? What specifically, they, what specifically once, do you want? Once Israel pulls out, they are not allowed to resettle. They are not allowed to reenter. The, the blockade has to be removed. Like all of that needs to happen so people can go back to their homes in North Gaza. Okay, are you aware that there are six thousand Palestinian prisoners in Israel. Yes, I am. But okay. I'm not on so I just do, can understand do you, why this you, cannot you, be added. I'm sorry. Do you think that if we add something that as you mentioned, the chances are that the six thousand Palestinian prisoners, including children, are not going to be released anytime soon. If we have, if we resolve, if we create another condition that has to do with a broader, uh, a broader a, a, a resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What I'm asking is the forcible transfer of Palestinians in Gaza out of Gaza. That should be a condition to this. Okay. So, so could you give me the the text, the language that you want me to add, I'll put it for it, a vote. Put it for a vote. Okay, put what, what vote do you want me to add? Give me, give, me the, give me the text. Palestinians will not be forcibly transferred out of Gaza. Or even within. That's all I'm asking for. That should be added. You know, if we throw too much into the can here, it's just going to get too muddy. It's already muddy. No, you're not. And you say you're not even voting. I'm here to observe. So, okay, so. Okay, is this is this is this what you meant? Palestinians will not be forcibly transferred within or out of Gaza. Thank you. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, any other comments? What does that mean, even? What time uh, period is well, this it, it means to? it means that the Palestinian does in it mean Gaza, to protect the people in the hospitals so that Israel cannot attack Hamas? I'm sorry. Does it mean to protect <laughs> the, the people that are currently in the hospitals so that Israel cannot attack Hamas? 
Anyways, jo uh, Joseph, I wrote something in the chat. Maybe maybe Susan Susan will um, agree with this. It's kind of in line with what she says. Maybe. I don't see the chat. Tell me what it is. <clears throat> Palestinians will not be forcibly transferred from or within Gaza and will be allowed to return and remain in their home homes areas. I, and I was going to say where they had previously resided before uh, October seventh. October seventh. Agreed. Yes. Good, Nasser. Nasir. Very reasonable. <laughs> Perfectly reasonable. I agree. To email it to you, or you know, their homes have all been destroyed. How can they go back? Well, they're going to rebuild like they always do. So you should put in once the homes are rebuilt or something. Um, Joseph, uh, you told you know, me uh, you invited me to come even though we came from a funeral of one of our close friends who was killed by Hamas just now, as I told you. Uh, so I asked the question in the chat, why do you include Hamas and not change the name? Uh, I've been a member for more than a decade in the Israel-Palestinian Confederation, as you know, we've been working on this for a long time. As you can see from the picture in the background, we all went up to the Temple Mount from all faiths, from all religions, uh, and I don't understand why you don't change the name. Call it the Israeli-Palestinian Hamas Confederation if you think that the Hamas is not a terrorist organization. Why, why are we including Hamas in this legislation? Unless you call them a government. If you want to recognize them and include them, then either include them within Palestine and just say the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Why did you say including Hamas? Because I believe that Hamas is an indispensable entity that could prevent us. If we speak in generalities about the Palestinian government, which is really um, in the West Bank to be generous, and you do not include specifically Hamas, which has the power to release the children and to be vague and ignore them, this legislation would lose any meaning. That's fine, the excellent. So I would suggest that you change what you wrote and write the Israeli Palestinian Hamas. Hamas was elected by 86% of the vote or something like that, right? Right. So let's call it the Israeli Palestinian Confederation. I, I live here in Jerusalem with many Palestinians. They work here in my neighborhood. I just came back from a dentist for my two of my grandchildren, a Palestinian dentist, excellent dentist. We live in peace and harmony, and we believe it can be a model of peace in the Middle East. If you think that Hamas is not a terrorist organization, then include them. If you think that it is a terrorist organization, then don't mention them. They are included. It, 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 I don't... I'm not, I'm not following your logic. Could you, why do I need to include Hamas as a separate entity? Because they're governments. They were elected. Mansour Abbas was elected. Okay. Hamas was elected. But Give them are, credit. Let's okay. call a spade a spade. IPHC. I think okay. it's fair. No? Don't, let, I, I, don't I hear, let, let me just finish. I see here, uh, I've been following Joseph for over a decade. I see something very beautiful. You've been able to bring together people from all walks of life, from differing opinions, and they actually listen to each other. They sometimes, or many times, they might disagree on many different items. And you asked me to give a presentation. Maybe one day I'll uh, have the strength to give a presentation. But I think what you're doing, doing is fantastic. But if you, my only question is, can we amend the current uh, legislation, because I think that's what you want to focus on. And let's call it the IPHC, unless people here want to vote and say Hamas is not to be recognized because it's a terrorist organization. That's fine if you want to say that. But if you do recognize them as a resistance group, as an elected government, then let's include them in our peace plan. Okay. You, let me ask you, let me, let me, uh, I do not think that a practical approach is to call 
Hamas or Israel, a terrorist organization, if you want to release children, okay? What you want to do is to follow the Israeli narrative and a Palestinian wants me to follow the Palestinian narrative. I do not choose to do that. My purpose is to have a practical resolution. I don't need to intimidate or, uh, or, or call people names in order to satisfy one side or another. As far as I'm concerned, the Israeli and the Palestinian governments are failed governments, and I do not choose to follow their narrative. My narrative, my purpose is peace and not, not to follow one side's or another's narrative. Jo Joseph, uh, <clears throat> I agree with Nathan. You know, I don't think we should include Hamas. Hamas is an elect, is, is a party within the Palestinian people, no different than Fatah or any of the other political parties. And Thank you. Include Hamas as a group, other, you know, uh, and instead of just the Palestinian government, the Palestinian government, it would be a government chosen by the people, and it will consist of different parties, including the Hamas, the Fatah, any other groups, just like the Israeli government. The Israeli government has some radical uh, parties within itself, no different than Hamas. They're probably as radical and can be labeled okay. as terrorist as Hamas. We're not including those. And I realize that those don't control the entire Israeli government. Hamas does not call itself Hamas in Gaza. I've been to Gaza several times. They call themselves the Palestinian government. And so okay. therefore, you know, like regardless of the of the government being like the Palestinian government of Ramallah and the Palestinian government, which is Hamas and Gaza, mentioning Hamas is basically dividing the Palestinian themselves, you know, among Gaza or between Gaza yeah. and the West Bank. I mean, by- okay. you know, Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. And what I will do, we will have two sets of voting here. Let I me did, speak I, for I, a I, second, I, Joseph. If Honey is saying that their elected government moved into Israel and murdered 1,200 civilians, then I disagree 100%, and I don't think it's even worth talking about the IPC. I and actually, you know, and I don't I, think it's worth talking about. All right. Okay. I, let's, let's, I, okay. There let's, is a point. Let's, there is a point wait, wait, that let, people let me, don't, there's a, let's there's have a, point a vote that people forget. Right now. Just give me a second. There is the IPC consists of 300 districts. So it's natural that one of these districts, the people will elect Hamas to represent one of these districts. So Hamas will be included in the IPC, whether we like it or not. And, and folks, you know, like this. Yeah, I yeah mean, then I disagree. OK, I, I think that it's a big joke. You know, if you're going to include people whose goal, whose stated goal is the eradication of us. Okay, let and, me, let me know, respond. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me respond, let me respond to the previous comment. I, I forgot, I don't know his name, who said that Hamas will be part of the IPC. That was Hani. Okay. Or, or some, somebody uh, in, order, in order to be part of the IPC, in order to be a parliament member, you have to swear allegiance to the IPC constitution. So if you read the IPC constitution, the, the long version, it basically says that any Palestinian or Israeli who decides to become a parliament member or president or vice president, must disavow his allegiance to the Israeli or the Palestinian government and must accept his allegiance to the IPC. So you cannot have allegiances to Hamas or the Israeli government or the Palestinian government at the same time and the IPC at the same time. 
and I, you know, Joe, I want to clarify one thing. Uh, I don't mean that Hamas as a group or as a party or what have you are members of the IPC. And I don't mean that the existence of Hamas will exist if there is an IPC, if there is a fair treatment. Hamas will not will cease to exist if this constitution existed or exists today. Hamas will not last even one year or two years at the most. It, it may not even last a few months. So therefore, I don't, you know, like uh, consider Hamas as the government. They were elected by the people and they became, you know, like the elected officials in Gaza. And for one reason or another, they were not given the opportunity to practice as a government. Everybody labeled them and for, you know, maybe the right reason or maybe not, not the right reason. Uh, without giving them a chance as a terrorist government that is not to be talked to. We did that with the PLO and it lasted a long time. We should should have, but you know, I'm not even going to talk about what we should have and should have not. We're talking about this and hopefully a better future for both the Israelis and the Palestinians. You know, that's what we're talking about. But, you know, at, you know, like denying the existence of elected people, regardless if it is Israelis or Palestinians, is not right, giving them a chance of not to really practice the democratic way is what makes them to be radicalized. All right, so here I made the changes to the um, legislation. I, I did not reference Hamas at all. And is that, what are your comments after these changes are being made? where we just re uh, reference the Palestinian government in general. Uh, Joseph, can I make a comment? Sure, sure. Can I also make a comment? Uh, it's always men talking. Can please female also have a voice? I have to leave. I have to leave in a moment. So please. OK, I'm, to, OK. Just, I do need you. to talk. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Um, I think it's I think it's important to real to recognize that the uh, current political situation as it's constituted with Hamas, Fatah, the Palestinian Authority, Likud, the Israeli government, these are all outgrowths of the uh, the frozen framework that is not functioning. Okay, and in in the idea of creating something that is based more on human principles and human rights, um, we cannot look to those sectors to be how we define our efforts. So if, if people just keep that in mind, I think yeah. they will understand that this movement has the ability to create its own legitimacy because all those other avenues are based on formulas that are not reflective of human rights and are failing for that reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. I have to. I have uh, to. All right. Thank you, Tom. Can I? Okay. Can I come in now? Can I come in quickly? First of all, we all have different narratives. We have totally respect, but I think we need to give Joseph a chance. I really admire what he's trying to do, even though I don't always agree with him. But please give him a chance because. For fuck's sake, he's trying very hard. So please, respect to you, Joseph. And number four, when we talk about prisoners, are you talking about all the prisoners who have been in detention in Israel for a long, 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 long time? And then I'll be able to then vote, but I need all the prisoners from in Israel to be released. Some of them are there for no reasons. Thank you, so, Joseph. Look, the, the idea is, I really, I really like the comment that someone said uh, Hamas see itself as the Palestinian government, so we don't need to refer to them specifically. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So I removed the the wording Hamas because I think that, and in any event, this legislation requires um, Hamas or to notify us, we are a common separate government, okay? Um, so 
not a, we they will notify us whether they accept this legislation and they can do that mm -hmm. confidentially without losing their um, uh, pride or or any political uh, power they can inform us confidentially that they are accepting this legislation and so and same for the government of israel so i think they i like the the discussion that is going on here but the thing it is, makes we, a do lot this, of sense. we do this every time. The contention, the contention arises when you when you specifically name Hamas, and like even me as a Palestinian, I have a problem with them being named out because we can't because I would prefer that all all um, mentions of any Palestinian authority should be the Palestinian government or uh, uh, ruling authority or whatever you want to call it because yeah. okay. it's okay. going, jo it's Joseph, going to create Joseph. That, I, I would like to break in for a second. We don't know who's talking. We should only have people talking, and you should only recognize people who are allowed to talk. Those are people that raise their hands. We can't have everybody busting in because uh, oh, nobody, I, nobody, nobody knows who's speaking. And I also, apologize. And, all, I and apologize. also, and also, I apologize because I do not see who raises his hand. I have a a big PowerPoint presentation. So, and I don't really, until we open up to a discussion, I don't see the order of the conversation. So oh. it's my fault. Okay. I apologize. But, but I think also we have to stick to the issue here and not start going all over the world. Okay. There's an issue here. There's a crisis going on right now. There's a war going on. That's what we're trying to attend to. Correct. All right. So if you want to say any, so we made some changes, I think very productive changes. And by the way, this really shows how a common government, Israelis and Palestinians, putting their heads together, making legislation that be is beneficial to everyone. I, I, this is this is beautiful as far as I'm concerned. You know, we see Palestinians and Israelis, and we are coming to a consensus. So let's take a vote on this. Um, on this legislation, Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Okay, publish the vote. Uh, um, hundred percent of the Palestinian parliament members who voted, voted yes. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members. Please vote. Publish the vote. 80% of the Israeli parliament members uh, who voted, voted yes. 20% voted no. Um, I am just curious uh, why could the pa Israeli parliament members who voted no, could you please identify yourself, who you are? Yes, me. And why I'm saying this Surprise. is- Okay, so Len, Len what, what district do you represent? Beersheba. Okay, and do you, did you accept the constitution? I have not. I don't care. The Constitution's fine. We're dealing with the current. Did you Joseph. did you vote in favor of the Constitution? Did you ratify the Constitution? Yes, Joseph. I've done this for five years now. It's irrelevant. Okay. So you ratify the Constitution. I'm, I'm talking about this. Why I voted against this? Because what this says is, anytime Hamas decides to murder a bunch of Jews and kidnap children and poke out the eyes of old people and cut the heads of babies, that's perfectly fine because the IPC is going to jump in then and say, okay, well, no more. You can't. These people are terrorists and murderers, according to my country and so, America. So, so. I, I am telling you why I voted no against yeah. this. Okay, so you Hamas, are you are, Hamas, you are a you're asking, liar. You asked weapons, me a and the weapons of mass destruction that were found in Iraq, okay, the land, tell us about it. You are okay. interfering. 
Yeah, okay. because you're lying. You're lying. As okay, you Hold, stop. I don't care. Okay, look. I, so I, I, let, I, let me I'm respond you, to you. Let me respond. To you. I'm, I, I am the president. I am the president. You're the president okay. has to. That has I to am let the, the president. Speak. I was. You're elected. not the dictator. You're the dictator. You mean? All I'm saying is. Yes, I am. I am. Hamas no, 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 no. In, I am I sorry. Don't. I was elected by one and a half million votes. You represent a district of forty-seven thousand people, and, and they okay? all voted. And they and, all and voted you accepted the constitution. You accepted the constitution. You accept. And you are against releasing. No, I'm Israeli. against. Yeah, you just voted against it. Against I'm releasing Israeli uh, 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 prisoners. In Gaza? No, that's not what I said. Yeah, Even you voted. Know. You voted. No, I asked you. Did you I voted? Vote? I voted against a ceasefire. Immediately. I'm sorry. No, that's not in the legislation. It is. I'm reading All it. Right. The Israeli but, policy. Uh, okay, let's go to the next person who voted no. Could you identify yourself? Okay. Okay. Hi. This is uh, Don. I'm voting from Jaffa. And yes. the reason I voted no is quite different from what I'm hearing from Len communicating. It's that I think there needs to be a, a pivot and a point to this legislation saying there's going to be a framework for peace efforts and a uh, deterrence to any future terrorism by either parties. Uh, certainly the actions that Hamas took, but certainly the terrorism in the West Bank and that Israelis have partaken in. And I think there should be some language in here pointing towards a framework for a peace negotiation and a secession of terrorism that is accepted by all parties. Thank you. You are not getting a cessation of terror by Hamas. Their charter okay. calls for okay. murdering right. every Jew okay. in the world. Okay, I just wanted to point out that the Israeli government and the, and the Palestinian government could notify us confidentially, and we will guarantee to them that we will not announce their acceptance unless there is a mutual acceptance. This demonstrates how a common government could be productive and could make peace and gain the confidence of the Israeli and the Palestinian governments as a necessary instrument, rather than going to Qatar and, and, uh, and uh, Egypt and Turkey, people that are not part of the area, we are live in the area and we want to facilitate peace. Okay, let's go to the next legislation. And that is make peace with Iran, Lebanon, and Syria. Libby, would you be so kind as to read this legislation? We are the parliament members of the federal government of Israel, Palestine. We are the only legitimate government in the region. Our people have experienced wars and violence for over a hundred years. The Israeli and Palestinian governments have failed to bring peace to the people in Israel, Palestine. Therefore, we are taking the initiative to protect all the people in Israel, Palestine, and provide them with peace. To achieve this, we are forming our own delegations to directly meet with the authorities in Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon, Syria, and Iran for the purpose of making peace in the region. Our intention is to demand that all these governments and entities agree to cease violence and threats against each other and work towards a lasting peace. Our goal is to be fair and objective and to expose any governments or entities that pose a threat to our people. All right, so you notice there is the Israeli and the Palestinian governments do not have a, a veto power over this legislation. Um, does anyone have any questions? or comments regarding, this is, by the way, legislation that Suzanne chose. Um, Suzanne, do you have any comments or questions regarding this legislation? I mean, I think you guys need to be specific, particularly in Lebanon, like who you're going to engage, you know, since they don't have a government really right now. Are you gonna engage Hezbollah? Are you gonna engage the government? 
they haven't had a president for a year. This, that, that's my fault. I actually had them change it from Hezbollah to Lebanon because I felt that recognizing one party would be kind of um, unproductive. It would create problems in Lebanon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it would. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to take a, a, a short break. Uh, but you guys can continue. Ahmed, you can speak and I'll be right back if you don't mind. Good evening again. My point is uh, maybe. Sudan, you are our guest here today. What do you think of what's going on here? Um. I'm not sure it's viable, but I am always for a space for Palestinians and for Israelis to dialogue together. Um, I think that's incredibly important. Um, I think it's incredibly important, particularly with how charged everything is now um, and how emotional everyone is. So I think that's important. Whether this is viable in the end, I don't know, but I think it's worth continuing to engage each other. Thanks, Suzanne. Let's go back to Ahmad because he did have the floor. Yes, good evening. Uh, I prefer to wait for Mr. Uh, Joseph till he return because I will say we can he see the record later. Mm. Just now he used the, the, the logic that is uh, uh, why we are waiting for Qatar and Turkey and other parties to come to decide the peace or war between Palestinian and Israel. Okay, so the same logic is applied here again. Uh, why to go to Iran or Lebanon or Syria? If we achieve peace between Palestinians and Israelis, okay? Next day, all of these countries will recognize and establish peace with us. I mean with us, totally. I'm okay. sorry, I'm back. So, Yes, I were, uh, yes. Just now, uh, Mr. Joseph, you used the logic that uh, why, why we are waiting for Turkey or uh, Qatar to, to be a mediator right. between, between Palestinians and Israelis. We are living in the same area and we are the most close to each other. Right. So in the same logic, no need to go to Iran, Lebanon, and Syria. So if we achieve the peace between us, uh, on the next day, these countries will uh, declare peace with us. I mean with us totally. Yeah. As a Palestinian Israelis. So their right. point or their claiming of the war with Israel is just because um, the fear of injustice uh, toward the Palestinians. If we, the, as the Palestinians, uh, achieve a peace and agree about that, next day they will be on the peace, all the area on the peace. If you allow me, you, you if you allow me. Joseph, uh, this is uh, Saeed. If you allowed me to uh, support... Well, let, let me just Hamas. respond to Ahmed. Are you suggesting that we nullify and we should not be going to Iran, Lebanon, and Syria? Because there is still the government of Israel and Palestine. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it will be worthless to go for them to achieve a peace with... Uh, you mean peace with Israel or Palestine or IBS? Which, uh, which okay. part? What, what I mean is we are the people of Israel and Palestine, okay? Mm. We have, we want to have, we have our own government, a, a federal government, but the Palestinians still have their government. The Israelis still have their government. The Israeli and I government and Iran are threatening each other. The Israelis and Hezbollah are threatening each other and Syria are threatening each other. We want to go to these governments and say, hey, we are the people, we represent the people, Palestinians and Israelis together, 
and we want you to stop threatening each other and we want you to stop uh, possibly going into war with each other and we want you to make peace because we are the people of Israel and Palestine. We want to live in peace. Mm, What's wrong yeah, with I, got, I, got, I got the point. Um, I have a doubt about that. Maybe they will misuse it or not, not misuse it. Maybe miss. Okay. 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 Sorry. Let's go to, uh, I think. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I, it's my turn. So I think uh, I, I agree with Ahmed, and I, in two ways. One, it is redundant. Number two, he is afraid, and I, I am with him on that. That once we start to talk about Iran and all of that, somebody on the other side will take advantage. Will will try to to exploit it in in a, in a negative way. But it's not essential, the whole thing. I, I'd like to mention one a little, a few words to, to Len, who is uh, soaked in, in, in lies. And, and, and please, Len, don't, don't interrupt me. There are two things about what, hap what happened with uh, October 7 is, uh, is terrible, horrible and all of that. But there are many lies. And the lies about it, the babies and the lies about uh, eyes and all and dismembering, that's absolute nonsense. And, and, and it is, I can show you many sources, okay? Number one. Number two, part of the people who died of the 1200, it was, uh, you know, um, part of them died by the IDF itself. The IDF had the instruction to kill anybody that they can see and, and they don't take hostages. They killed the hostages as well. They shot shells into, into houses where, where Hamas people and hostages were there. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt a little bit. Um, All right. So yeah. Let, anyway. let, let's focus on this legislation, OK? Lomo, uh, no, no, I think you need to take a visit to Kfar Aza. OK, Saeed, if you want to say something, Saeed, if you want to say something about this died. legislation. They died, but all these whole stories about what the Hamas did uh, to, to bodies, to, 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 to babies, yeah, don't buy it, please. I, I know, I know it is terrible. And I, I, I know people in Faraza. I have friends in Faraza. So, so I know it is terrible, but, but let us put it in perspective and, and without lies. All right, let's let's say I beg your pardon, Joseph. Can I just say something in connection what in connection with what Slomo has said? I'd be very short. Is I'd be I'd be very quick. Is that okay? Sure, that sure, okay? go ahead. Okay. Last two weeks ago, Slomo um uh, Slomo mentioned that in just one sentence. He has enlarged on it, he has uh, added to it now. So I was I was curious. I was curious, and I um I read, read up, uh, read, I mean, I'm, all I can do is read. I read what the Electronic Intifada said. I read what Jonathan Cook said. Jonathan Cook is an independent journalist that lived in Palestine for about 20 years until two years ago. He's, I find him very good. I find him meticulous and scrupulous, etc. Now, they both mentioned uh, a thing called the Hannibal Procedure, which, meet, which ties up with what Slomo, who obviously is, is is, has far, far greater knowledge about the IDF and about Israel than I have. But it, what I read tied up and added and supplemented what Slomo said last week and what he's saying now. So that's all. I just wanted to add that. So you can you can check out okay. Jonathan Cook. You well, can check well. out the electronic intifada and the video they showed that the IDF took to Israel took down of, of a girl who was saying exactly what Slomo has said. That, that's all. I finish now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Does anyone want to speak about this legislation? Because we this is not a, a Zoom about disparaging one side or another. This is about how to make peace. Do you have any? I've been waiting for uh, to say something about that. Okay, comments. go ahead, Said. Uh, Lynn Bennett is an extreme right winger. I don't know if he's a brainwash or he just born this way to hate everybody else and to not accept the fact that there is there is a suffering in both sides. I I've been watching I've been watching the war uh, after September 11. I mean after uh, October 7. There is a lot of things happening. There is a lot of suffering, and I tell you something. Uh, the last part where you said about uh, who's negotiating for the Palestinians today, the Qataris, and the Iranians. This is why we're missing the whole point. 
you're not reaching out to me. You're not reaching out to the people of Gaza. You're not reaching out to the people of Mizra al-Sharqi who live next to Ofra. And we never, ever sit with each other in a round table, understand who each other and how we can understand each other. The reality is what makes sense about this and why I'm spending an hour or two hours every time I have a chance to do, because it is talking to me and you directly. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling your suffering as equal as feeling my suffering. Right. Like said, just said, okay, there is killing. Who's controlling us? Right wing government. I am I am a person who's against Hamas 100 million percent. They they banned three accounts for me. Hamas member banned three accounts for me because I criticize Hamas and I'm against Hamas ideology. But guess what? Last week, we lost a brother, uh, 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 my, my friend, his name, Ala Al Absi, lost his father, lost his house that we, we celebrated four months ago that he opened his house. You know what? These people are against Hamas and they are suffering. They are dying. Who is negotiating for me today? No PA, no Hamas, only Qatar and Iran. Until we realize these right-wing governments, and I'm telling you, something, I want to tell you something, and straightforward, these people who's coming to help us or coming with their military, with their ships, military ships, they're not coming for you because you are the chosen one. They're not coming for the promised land. They're not coming for the holy land. They are coming for only one interest, their money and their interest under Gaza as trillions and trillions of, 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 of natural gas and the Ben Gurion Canal and coming for business only. So until we realize we are one and we are suffering as one and we need to eliminate the right wing governments on both sides, we will understand how to approach each other and how to eliminate all these evils around us. The, 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 the Netanyahu government brought hundreds of millions of dollars from Qatar to Tel Aviv to give to Hamas in the time of BA is responsible for Gaza. Look where is Gaza? Look where is these money, this this chaos and this suffering is is res responsible by Netanyahu, not by anybody else, because he want to weaken the PA and weaken the Palestinian Authority. We don't Hamas, we don't have Hamas in West Bank. Why we are suffering Hamas? Uh, why we are suffering West Bank today? And we are we are having over 200, 300 people killed so far in, in West Bank. So until we sit together, face like like this, face like face like face with face and understand what's our suffering, there is no solution ever, ever. Thank you. All right, let's take a vote on this legislation. Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Palestinian parliament members. Okay, publish the vote. 91% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. Israeli parliament members, please vote. Publish the vote. 92% of the Israeli parliament members voted. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, we have another legislation that was accepted by both sides, which really demonstrate the ability and the feasibility of a federal common government for the people of Israel and Palestine. Um, let's have a, a post simulation survey after participating in the simulation, do you support a common federal government for the people of Israel and Palestine? Please vote. Okay, publish the vote. Uh, sorry, Joseph, you didn't, uh, oh, it, uh, I didn't see it on my screen. I didn't see the, the survey question. Oh. Uh, I don't know why. Are you voting in favor? Yes, 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 of course, yes. Okay. All right. So we have at least 97% with Olivia, it's more. 97% in favor of a common federal government, 3% against. We started with 90% in favor and 10% against. Now we are 97% in favor and 3% against, which really shows you 
that the only difference between a common government being accepted or not is awareness. We need to create awareness for the people of Israel and Palestine that there is a way to make a peace and to give both sides security, okay? So a common government, federal government could bring peace as we just saw in the, all of you voted really, 93% of you voted in favor of that. Online election, regardless of what um, the doubts about online elections can be verified, can be accurate and can be honest. And they can and and one day of war between Israel and Gaza costs way over a hundred million a day, uh, and a hundred million dollars could make this common government a reality. And uh, I'm asking you to tell a friend to join our next simulation. This is what a hundred million dollars would cost you: a Van Gogh picture, an Airbus, and a Los Angeles mansion, or peace in the Middle East. So I'm going to open, up, to, I'm you, going to open uh, up to a discussion. Here we can ask Suzanne a question. It allows or... me to, to add one thing, Joseph. If you ask every Palestinian, do you want do you want a state or you want to be free in the in the homeland? They will tell you we're looking for freedom and we look, we're looking for equal rights. Does not matter what you call it. Does not matter how you approach it. I want to be free as equal as every one of you in my homeland. That's why I want to be free. I want to be free from the river to the sea without discrimination, without hate, without telling me you are chosen and I'm not, without telling me you have the right, I'm not, we all equal. If you ask every Palestinian this question, they tell you I agree with equality and they will agree with living in peace together. All right. Um, Saeed, let's... that's what I hear from Palestinian refugees throughout the region, that exact same thing. That's all they want is free. From and you know, ma'am- By uh, the way, we uh, are, you know, we you are, know, we have just... I, told, I told Joseph, I am 100% on his page. I'm willing to approach the Palestinians who lives in America. We've been living here, my family been living here from 1912. I could reach every Palestinian in, in, in this country. My cousin is the highest politician Palestinian ever reached in the Brazilian politics, Omar Abdel Aziz. He's a senator, two time senator. I'm telling you, if you come talk to the Palestinian, like we are talking to each other today, and you see, we, we only see evil. We, they only see evil. They only see Netanyahu and Ben Gavir and Smartridge. You see every demonstration coming out today. A lot of Jewish coming out to support us, a lot of Christian, a lot of others, they are supporting us. Yesterday, I could show you right now a video of Edward. He's shouting free, free Palestine with Jewish people. So it's not about Jewish and Muslims, it's not about Palestinian and Israeli. It's about, it's about us to come together, sit together, understand each other and start from America because I don't care about who's controlling uh, Tel Aviv today or the Knesset or who's controlling Hamas. If Joe Biden called today and say ceasefire, they will ceasefire. We have to, to come together as Jewish, as Palestinians, as Muslims, as okay, everyone sure. to be united to, to put influence in the politics here and to make it happen because if I can have lunch with, with Joseph, I could have lunch with, with him in Tel Aviv too. So let's do it okay. and let's work together. And I'm willing to put all my time for this. Thank you. Yes. I, will, I, 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 have, I have something. I'm all sorry. right, let, let, I, right let, let me call the order. First, no, let, let, me, Lynn, let me just Lynn, say, let me just wait, say wait, one hold, thing. Hold on, Lynn. Hold on, your horses. I have to say one thing, Joseph. I, I am not calling anybody names. I don't want anybody calling me names. If I'm sincere in what I believe, Shlomo sincere in what he believes, Baroness. and everybody is, believes what they believe. But don't call anybody a liar, because that's not polite. And if anybody is insulting anybody, they should not be on this panel. Okay. So I, I, be respectful I, yeah. of We're each the, other. We, we are not here to disparage anyone and to call that's names. Right. All right. Let's have the order of, of speaking and asking. You can ask Suzanne a question, because she has a lot of experience. Uh, Len, uh, Oh, I, okay, Nasir, Shlomo, Libby, and then we'll go on. Let's start with Nasir. Thank you, Joseph. So what I wanted to say was, there's been some things thrown out here that I think that are, um, that need to be kind of clarified. For example, um, I believe it was Natan who said that, you know, the people in Jerusalem, they live happily in one city and everybody loves each other. 
I'm from Jerusalem, Natan. My family's from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And most of them have been stripped of residency because they had yeah. left the country to go work or to go study. And many of them have not been allowed to return. Many of them have to go back as, uh, tour as tourists and stuff like that. And then you have a housing crisis in Jerusalem where people um, <clears throat> can't build homes to expand families. Where I live in Jerusalem, it's very hard to obtain building permits to expand our homes. Meanwhile, the settlement next to us, Pisgat Zaeb and uh, Nebi Samuel are building thousands of thousands of homes and have gone from 6,000 to well, almost 20,000 um, settlers. So then we're put to the things, well, you guys are happy, you guys are working. Yeah, residents of Jerusalem do have economic benefits better than people in the West Bank and stuff, but you know, don't please don't accept this as your charity or your excuse. The fact is today, <clears throat> You know, we're focusing a lot on Gaza, but I really think that the West Bank right now is going through a big crisis. We have towns that have been ethnically cleansed, like in Rush Rush, Wadi Si, Mazafar Yatta. And as my brother um, Said said, um, the issue with Palestinians is mainly about um, is mainly about justice. And I participated in a Zoom call uh, about four or five days ago. And it just, what got me, and maybe I'm, this is Suzanne, maybe because she, she has experience, because I do want to give her a chance to respond, because her expertise here is definitely appreciated, is that for the Israelis, it's more of a, a, a political, like, like these Palestinians are treated almost like an orphan case. Like, what are we going to do with these orphans? They have no mother, they have no father, they're just, we're talking to the Qataris, we're talking to the Turks, we're talking to the Iranians, we're talking to everybody about the Palestinians. And I even think Ronald Reagan one time, in the 1980s, in the Lebanon crisis, he said the same thing. Like he was told the Lebanese, they, they want to be assimilated. They want this. He said, well, what do the Palestinians want? And nobody can answer that question. And I think we're still at that right now, that nobody's speaking for them. And, and go back real quick, and I'm going to be done. The Zoom meeting that I said, and an Israeli person who's considered a peace activist said this to me. He said, you know what the problem with you Palestinians are? You guys are working for justice rather than seeking for peace. And I looked at him, I said, what, what, what the heck does that mean? He said, because you guys are looking for justice. You guys don't want peace. And I said to him, well, you know what peace can mean? There's something called a Carthaginian peace, which means that Carthage was totally destroyed. And guess what? That meant peace for Rome. And this is the notion that people like Lynn and other people who've called me worse names and liars, and he's, you've called me an asshole on this, wait, on wait, this program. Stop, he, stop pointing at an individual. No, I mean, no, we He's we gonna... are about a broad question here. Okay, so so the thing is, is that is that is that how do you have peace with no justice? Because peace is an yeah. elusive word. You can't you can't have a lasting peace without justice. It doesn't work. How do you have peace if your government is Hamas? Well, how do you have peace with the government that has led by uh, Ben Gavir and Netanyahu? Great question. <laughs> Good right. question. So then there won't be peace. We'll just have war. There's no point in the uh, Israeli Palestinian uh, conference. That, that's the point of the IPC is to not let the extremists control us. Exactly. <laughs> no, but so many of you have said Hamas is your government. But Hamas but, is an extremist. Hamas has clearly stated a, clearly stated what their what their goals are. Israel did the same thing too. Okay, let's go to let's go to Shlomo, and then Libby, and then Saeed, and then Margot. Yeah, just uh, Jonathan. I don't know if you know anything about Hamas. I don't know if you know anything about Hamas attempts to to talk to both Israel and and to Obama in the United States. I just heard an interview with Mandia Benjamin, and she said that she went to Gaza and she talked to Hamas people, and, she, and they gave her a letter to go to Obama and give it to him. He never responded to it. So it is Hamas with all the problem. Yeah, there is there, there, there is there is a way to talk to them. And in fact, I'm not don't uh, it's not me. You can ask the Shin Bet, the the head of the. The head of the Israeli security from, uh, I mean, the old guy from, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, he, he said, we need to talk to Hamas. And just to remind you, who created Hamas and who maintained Hamas? So it's, people already talked about it, but it is Israel that wanted Hamas in order not to get it, uh, any chance for two-state solution, because then Hamas are the bad guys, we cannot talk to them, 
You see, they want to replace us. They were da da da. Okay, we cannot talk to them. So that was the reason. So I mean, so you're and, denying and, their public statements that they want to kill every Jew in Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would do if I were them. By the way, then you too. Good. You, well, that's Jonathan, what you're you, doing Jonathan, right Jonathan, now. You, Jonathan, would like to kill anybody, everybody, if you were in their shoes and you have never been in their shoes. Let me no, finish. We're talking to them right now. Right Let now in Gaza, we're talking to Hamas in their language. No, what? Yeah, really, really. Every day you kill uh, 150 children. Yes, that, that's the and language. How many that's warriors. the language that you understand. And that's, that's the Who only language. the children that, in front don't, of the don't, soldiers? Don't, please don't interrupt me. No, let me finish you. No, don't you interrupt me. Who puts their children no, uh, in front of Jonathan, the soldiers? Jonathan, you are interrupting. You have not raised your hand. We want to have order this in our, okay? our presentation. And Goodbye. by the way, you can point, you can ask Suzanne. No, he's gone, question. he's gone, he's gone. Goodbye, good riddance. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, they, they don't want to listen because listening meaning understanding. I want to add one more thing about, about Gaza and Hamas, don't, to remind everybody what happened in Gaza, like the last 16 years, it, there was an open, open air prison. It was a concentration camp. And, and now it is a death camp. And so those, this is the reality. You have to deal with it as is. Okay, I'm done. All right. Let's go to Libby, then Saeed, then Margo, then John, and then Muhammad Hadi. Uh, thank you. And thanks, Suzanne, for being here. I appreciate your background and work. And I'll say that uh, I have been participating in Jewish Palestinian dialogue here in California for more than 30 years. And we had a peacemakers camp for five summers where people came from the Middle East. We've done a lot of uh, work in bringing people together to share stories and to build connections and trust and new ways of looking at things. For me, this is a very difficult and discouraging time because over those 30 years, we had our ups and downs. We had wars that resolved, more wars that were resolved. But this is the worst, and this is the most deadly. I think it would be easy to sort of give up and say, what the hell? Nobody really wants peace. Nobody's willing to give anything up. Everybody wants what they want. It doesn't matter what price anybody else has to pay to get what they want. So do we give up? Or do we see this as a whole new opportunity? And for me, I would say yes, in that it appears to me that more people globally know about this conflict now than ever before. Yesterday morning, I was on a, giving a little talk to a group of young people from all over Africa. And they are looking at what it means to be a peace worker. From where? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. All over where? Africa. 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 They were oh. from different African countries. These are young people. What did we want to talk about? What did they bring up? The war between the Israelis and the Palestinians and what was happening in Gaza. So when I got off of that call, I thought, you know, the world is looking at this for the first time in a way that hasn't been really thought through carefully before. So I would just like to encourage us in this group and Joseph, your patience that you've been doing this for so long, that we stick with it, that we understand we do have different views, but if we are looking for a solution that meets the needs of all the people, if there's a will, there's a way and it requires new thinking, creative thinking, willingness to step outside our comfort zone, willingness to be inclusive and to thoughtful about people that we don't really know. And the last thing I'll say is I think if you want to see a good model of grassroots work, I would suggest looking at combatants for peace because these are ex-fighters from both sides, Israeli soldiers and Palestinian fire, uh, fighters who, who have engaged in violence. And they've all put down their weapons and they say violence doesn't work. War isn't resolving our conflicts. We really have to work together for the good of all people. And they work together to rebuild communities, to talk about nonviolence, and they 
right now during this conflict, this terrible war, they have decided that they're sticking together, that nonviolence is the only answer, and that building relationships and working together, bringing the two communities together is the only answer. Correct. So there are good grassroots things going on, and I would encourage us not to give up and to be thoughtful and, lo and loyal to this cause. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to call the order um, Saeed, Margo, John Mitchell, Muhammad Adi, Anas Massad, Len Bennett, Una Ellis, and you can raise your hand. But Suzanne, you have the privilege of speaking anytime you want. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I only have a few minutes. I thought this was ending uh, now. So I only have uh, like 10, 10, 15 minutes max. If, so. you allowed me, if you allowed me to speak for one minute, uh, because I see your energy and I'm honored to be here with you today. And thank you for being here. Uh, I spent two years uh, in uh, prison back home before I came, the first intifada. And the, the charges was because we attack uh, with rocks, uh, Rabin convoy. But today in America, they call me Jesus. You know, they call me Jesus because I'm a go, I go against Hamas in every way. I'm the, the first, uh, the, the number one influential Palestinian in TikTok, where I want to, they, they want to censor me because I'm telling them what happened is a crime and this is not a victory and this is not the way we're going to fight and independent, have independent Palestine. I believe uh, Joseph uh, did change me a lot because the first Israeli I ever sit with as an Israeli, not as a Jew. From Israel, it was Joseph. I was sit with him, and he changed my energy toward this. I believe if we sit together, if we can put this energy together, if 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 I can be able to visit Joseph in Ofra, who's next to my town, I will be visiting a brother. So if we can get to work this way, and we can hear the people, listen to the people, and secure the people, because you have to understand, we blame with people with fear with hate, with a lot of brainwash. But in reality, when you see a Jewish carrying a flag of Palestine and he's supporting the ceasefire, you will start saying, no, he's not my enemy, he's my brother. So unless we can do this, and I'm willing to do it, and I believe this is the start. If you support us in this one, I am willing to work with this group. I know we are a few here, but I promise you, if we start taking action on the ground, we're going to bring a lot of people together with us. Thank you for being here. And Thank you, Saeed. All right, uh, Suzanne, did you want to respond or make comments before you leave? Uh, I think, you know, whether I think this is viable or not, I don't know. But I think, as I said, when you took a break, Joseph, I think it's important. I always support Palestinians and Israelis coming together to talk um, and to maybe argue and and work it out. And I think part of what I've seen here is that you see each other's humanity and that's what's getting lost um, in, in the media. And, you know, both sides are just pumping in, you know, all of this propaganda to, to further divide. And because of, you know, the situation, it's so painful for everyone. So it's like, we, we're not feeling each other's empathy or pain. And that is is a problem. And so I, I, I think that you guys being willing to come together from all different theologies and religions, I think is incredibly important. Thank you. All yeah. right, let's go to Margo. So let me call the order. Margo, John Mitchell, Muhammad Hadi, Anas Massad, Len Bennett, Una Ellis, Tony McCauley, and Shinira Islam. Let's muted. go to Margo. Hi, Margo. Margo's muted. muted. You need to, need, need to unmute. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. And I just want to say briefly that I'm in a sense, I don't represent anyone but the diaspora now that we're out of the simulation. I was imagining myself as representative <laughs> from Balad for Al Jalil or the Galilee. And I believe one of the most important projects probably is to build a binational culture and recognize the pain on both sides. But I think that I, I definitely join the thirst for justice and peace of the Palestinian people. 75 years 
Val Nakba. And we've seen Val Nakba's ongoing Susan Molnar forcibly, so forcibly reminded me of that we need to have a resolution, that fifth provision of the resolution, which I strongly supported for right of return for, for the Gazans who have been newly displaced. And most of these people are refugees or descendants of refugees from 1948. But the, the idea that they would have, undergo sort of a double, a double NACPA. And I think NACPA denial is the thing because we have, we have, we have two major structural justices from 1948 that have haunted Palestine, Israel for 75 years. It's, it's become the, the ghosts of ethnic cleansing, past, present, and future. And I'm sure Susan would remind us the statute, the Rome statute of the International Criminal, uh, International Criminal Court makes uh, involuntary transfer, a crime against humanity, second only to genocide. And we still have to remedy. I think one of the important things a peace process must do, you'll forgive me for speaking of the larger issues, is, is to address al nakba rather than try to deny it or trivialize it. Because the, I think, I think the, the latest, the Gaza tragedy recently we're seeing now is, is really a reverberation of what the world permitted to happen in 1947 and 1949 has done nothing about it. And it's a, it's really a tragedy, and and I and I think a culture of binational awareness and empathy and, and nonviolence. And I, if I I'm, if I'm speaking correctly, that that I think I heard a phrase from a Palestinian poet. It's something like "Mohari de Madaniya," perhaps in in Arabic. And I believe it's "Hitnagdu Israhid" is the phrase that I heard in Hebrew. I'm not sure how accurate that is or how accurately I pronounced either of them, but. Uh, but I'm here, for, I, I believe Joseph is promoting a culture of binationalism, and that's why I'm here, I'm to promote empathy. Thank you. All right, thank you, Margo. Let's go to John, John Mitchell. Hello, everyone. Um, I'd just, I'd just like to uh, mention a statement made by the Israeli Minister of Defense, Yuval Gallant, today. He said that, uh, he said in response to a missile that was fired from Lebanon, and he said that if these missiles don't stop, Beirut is going to experience the same kind of bombing that is happening in Gaza. Well, as far as I know, there isn't any Hamas tunnels under Beirut. So uh, Israel's bombing of Gaza is essentially okay against Hamas, but they don't care how many civilians are actually killed. And they're prepared to do that in Beirut in response to missiles coming from Lebanon. But anyway, uh, on the question of terrorism, uh, I think we agree with the basic understanding of the definition of terrorism, and that's the killing of innocent civilians. Well, uh, Hamas has killed many innocent civilians, but you know, tell me this, if, if someone wears a military uniform, uh, it seems that they, they receive a bizarre legitimacy to kill people, uh, if they kill uh, innocent civilians, they're not classified as terrorists. So if an organization kills innocent civilians, then given the amount of uh, Palestinian innocent civilians that have been killed, then Israel is 10 times the size of uh, uh, Hamas as being a terrorist organization. So why is, why is Hamas become an organization of terrorism. Well, uh, Cherie Blair, a wife of the former British Prime Minister, Tony Blair, uh, 20 years ago, she was interviewed and at the height of these uh, suicide bombings. And the, uh, the journalist asked her for her opinion of that. And she said, it is a result from a people with no hope. And she was absolutely correct. Now, given the time since 1948, since 1948, since 1967, for all these years, there's never been anywhere near peace, even under Rabin. Uh, he still expanded uh, settlements in the West Bank. And when you expand settlements, you're going to evict more Palestinians. So. Uh, I just, the reason why we've reached that stage with the killing of innocent uh, Israeli civilians, because Israel 
and the West, in particular the USA, have never made any effort to bring peace to the Middle East. They've mm. always supported Israel. And until the US changes its mind, then the extremity against uh, the Palestinians for all these years will stop, will stop the extremity of Hamas against Israeli civilians. That's all, thanks. Yeah, thank you, John. All right, let's go to, uh, let me or, uh, call the order again, Mohammed Hadi, Anas Massad, Glenn Bennett, Una Ellis, Tony McCauley, Shaniria Islam, and Ziva Inbar. Uh, let's go to Mohammed Hadina. Uh, well, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to share uh, uh, with you some of the ideas that I, uh, I I felt with it during the last month, and let me say it's my it's my first time that I'm attending your uh, meetings. But uh, as a mediator, uh, at the beginning of the war, I started thinking about what should mediators do during this uh, um, terrible times for for both of us. Uh, and I I tried to find found out where where can I found more mediators, peace makers in the whole world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be honest, I, I I failed with that because when we start learning mediation, we start learning that mediator should be neutral. And as a Palestinian, to be honest, yeah, I start thinking, am I neutral or not? Should I be neutral or not? And after that, I I found out that it's not the matter of being neutral. It's the it's the matter of uh, 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 do you have the the ability to hear the other side. Uh, uh, to listen to him, uh, and I, I, I found out that um, uh, uh, if if we if we give us the, the the time, the opportunity to hear each other, to listen to each other, we can we can make that the different. I I start thinking that I should share some ideas because uh, some of the colleagues here start to put blame here and there. I don't think that it's the way to. To go forward, I think that we should think in another way that uh, uh, people who are believing in peace uh, should uh, fight for peace, not for war and against. Um, uh, um, this is the main idea that uh, I, I thought it's very important uh, uh, to talk about and to raise. Uh, I think that we should listen more than talk. Uh, that's that's the, the, the main point. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, I Mr. just wanted Joseph, to I'm respond sorry, to I what you were saying. We are not mediators. We are the common government will be the legitimate government of Israel, Palestine. And it is has an interest. It's not it's not a uh, disinterested party. It does have an interest. It's just that it has the Israeli and the Palestinian governments that it has to deal with, but it will be the government of Israel and Palestine with the interest of making peace and giving prosperity to the Palestinian and the Israeli people. Let's go Joseph, to um, Joseph, Anas. Joseph, Joseph, I need to go. But okay, thank, thank you, you so much again for hosting me. I really All appreciate right. it. Thank you so thank much, you. appreciate right. your- Have a good day. All good right, evening. thank you so much. Bye-bye. Let's go to Anas Massad. Anas, all right, uh, let's go to Len Bennett, Len. Okay, uh, did you knock off that person I was arguing with Shlomo? No, I, oh, he, I did not. I, are you talking about Jonathan? He, yeah. He no, I did not knock him. I didn't off. knock off he, he anybody. Just, he I just assumed, knew, okay. He took himself I think off he himself. said that he's leaving, and someone. Oh, said, okay. Okay. So he just cut himself off. That's fine. Uh, I just want to point out why most of the Western world considers Hamas like Hezbollah to be terrorist groups, because these are non-government militias, and uh, and there's a difference between Hamas and the IDF. Right now, right now. You've got a a war going on. People die in war. Uh, People died in Germany. 
People died in, in Japan, people died in the United States. Civilians die in a war. I would point out that no army in the world has ever done what Israel is doing now, Hamas, in, in uh, Gaza. You've got uh, Israel, ta Israeli tanks lined up, ushering Gaza citizens away from the fighting areas where Hamas is trying to keep them there. Nobody has ever, ever shown such kindness. And tell me what war you've ever had aid going in. You don't have aid going into a war. The purpose of a war is to get the other side to surrender. And this war is going to go on till either Hamas surrenders or Israel surrenders. And this war is going to go on. It was started by Hamas, and they cannot be allowed to, to, since they have no government to report to and no authority to report to, they cannot be allowed to just cross the border and uh, slaughter people and then go back and hide out in their own little country. So it's very sad and people are dying, but yes, but every single one of these deaths, whether they're an Israeli or an Arab, is on the hands of Hamas. And if you can't accept that, then you're your 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 moral compass is not where my moral compass is. Uh, let, let me ask you a question. Can I ask him yes. a question. Uh, well, hold, does, hold on a what? second. Does does this guy? Uh, say, let let me ask you a question, I, Len. Let me ask you a question. Do you support a common federal government for the people of Israel and Palestine? I think that when there is a two-state solution, the common government makes wonderful sense. Do I think that you're going to set this up before there's a two-state solution? No. Do I, do I support it? I, cer I certainly support it. Yeah, but I think you need. I think you need a two-state solution. Say, say, let's let's have. I think Una, you raised your hand, but I I don't see it anymore. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I was on the march yesterday in London with one million people, and I was in my group, the Jewish Voice for Peace. We are a very big block. And I want to read something to Len. My mother survived the Holocaust, but died ashamed of Israel actions in her name. Therefore, uh, I don't know what to say to what Len is saying. There's a lot of anger. I'm also very angry, but for different reasons. And October didn't happen in October. It happened long, long time ago. Therefore, and lastly, I want to say thank you to Joseph because by Joe, you have a hard job on your hand, but <laughs> I am behind you. I am behind you and we want peace. A children being killed. I'm a mother and I'm a grandmother. And you know what? Every day I have, and I'm not going to cry, but I go to uh, Palestine to help. And we did some work four years ago with the hospital, which has been bombarded and we lost some of our doctors. Yeah. Therefore, and I'm not going to cry because I have nothing to cry about, but I'm very, very sad. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. All right. The, the next is Tony McCullough, Shanira Islam, Ziva Inbar, Shlomo Orr, and Nasir. Okay, let's have Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi. Actually, uh, uh, some time ago, I learned you could hit the little reaction thing as people are talking, and that was the hand, I think, that went up. But... But I, but I would say that uh, uh, Libby and I have talked offline. I, I, I really agree with what she says. We have a similar experience in facilitating conflict resolution. Um, I've done it throughout my career uh, in business between unions and management and, and different departments that were in conflict. So I started doing it in my in my private life as well. And uh, and, and and it really is difficult, but there's a there is a there is a method to it. And and the first point is everyone's point of view feels reasonable to them. The second point is right. if you can't capture that, then you don't get their point of view yet. It it always will feel reasonable to them. And uh and then you have to hold it tentatively until they confirm it. So so uh, just an encouraging word to, to to keep trying to dialogue, keep trying to hear the other point of view as reasonable to them, 
the ad hominem attacks are 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 are, are useless. They're not good arguments. But dialogue works, and as difficult as this is, if if dialogue can happen, then there's always hope. And I and I think this whole effort is is uh, stimulating that. And uh, and and so I, I didn't really raise my hand, but but that's what I have to say. I see. Thank you, Tony. All right, let's go to Shiniria, then Ziva, in Bar, then Shlomo, or and then Nasir. Shiniria. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I think what I want to say is similar to what John was saying. Um, just, I feel like there's so much fear of Hamas. You know, I've, I've been hearing it all throughout this meeting and all throughout the last month that people are so afraid of, of Hamas. Um, but I'm really afraid of the IDF um, when I see what they've done to my people, um, the way that it's been for the last 75 years. That's what's truly scary to me. So I guess my question is for anybody on this call who doesn't support Palestine yet, um, do you think that Palestinians have a right to defend themselves? And yeah, no? Oh, why? Are we not human or are we animals or? No, I... because nobody's attacking Palestinians. You look at all the Israeli Arabs, they're very well integrated. They are most of the medical people in Israel. An Arab, they're they're in, they're in they're in the government. No, no one uh, attacks Palestinians. That's really? right. No one's okay. So you have you have minor attacks. You have one one fiftieth. One one of blood one, one blood one drop of blood is a lot, my friend. Okay. It's not minor. When listen, you get, listen. They, okay. the let, Arab, let, let the, Shinaria, the, you asked a question, but you, you do you have? She asked the question. I'm giving you an answer. You did not okay. ask me the, the reason, question. The, the last one we asked the question. The reason the the reason the Palestinians are in such trouble is all the leaders are crooks. The heads of Hamas have billions of dollars and live in Doha. The crook so, is so, don't blame that, the one who don't has blame that on Israel. Okay. Four charges of an indictment. You, do you, have, That's do you have more more to say to us, please, Shinirin. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to wrap my head around what just happened um, <laughs> because, yeah, during the Nakba, eight hundred thousand of us were expelled or murdered to make way for settlers from Europe, people who are persecuted against Jews. Who the, wanted... the majority of the population of Israel comes from Arab countries. Let, you don't let, know what you're talking talk. about. Let it's... her talk, please. No, 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 it's not your turn. Thank you, Shlomo. Stop doing that. Stop yeah, doing I think that. I mean, it's easy to interrupt me because I'm a Muslim woman. I understand it, Lynn. But yeah, um, I guess I just wanted to say in the spirit of peace, I think one thing that would really help us is to acknowledge the reality of history on both sides, that the Holocaust is real. That was really painful and that shouldn't have happened. The Nakba was real. It shouldn't have happened. It was really painful. And the Nakba has been going on ever since. And it's hard that our history keeps getting denied by our oppressors. And we keep being told that the deaths that our community is facing are not happening, that we're not facing this discrimination. It's really sad because you can see it with your own eyes, but it still doesn't matter and it still doesn't count for some reason. It might be because my skin is a different color than yours and that might be hard to wrap your head around, but I'm as human as you are. My relatives are as important as your relatives. And I think until we can all agree all right. that every life is equal, we're, we're not gonna get anywhere. Thank you. All right, thank you, Shaniria. Let's go to Ziva. In Ziva in bar, please. Yeah, hi. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, okay. I'm from Tel Aviv. It's my second time in this uh, group. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you all. It's uh, very exciting to, to um, be aware that all this is going on. I'm a very... Uh, uh, I'm not an activist. I was never in any uh, um, activity, political or anything. So what I want to say is that the obstacle between all this good, uh, beautiful talk here and getting five million people to join us is awareness that um, that all the narratives are so uh, uh, full of interests from our, all the governors, all the, uh, I don't know who told, uh, said here that uh, the Palestinian uh, leadership are crooks. So let's 
let's say that um, most governments, of course, Israel most is everything is very corrupt and uh, hopefully some power will get there to do something. But the whole idea of this group, as I understand it now, is um, to give the people the idea, the concept, the uh, consciousness that it is possible for us to do the change without our uh, all the big powers of the world, not only Israel and Palestine, right. but right. also uh, Iran, uh, the US, US and, every, and Russia and everything. So to give the 5 million people just the idea that all we have to do is to click our vote and uh, and it will be so um uh, such a huge change right. but uh, everybody here is uh, every, uh, every most people my, my family my friends everything uh, everything everybody thinks that we are powerless and this is what's beautiful about this uh, uh, your mm -hmm. organization here is that we don't need to get uh, uh, powerful friends in that uh, those senators and those and to all we have to do is to get this uh, hundred million dollars just to, it's not it's peanuts just to get it uh, and uh, one last thing um our guest that I didn't I wanted her to hear it I forgot her name uh, sorry her uh, Shanira. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Susan. Uh, Islam. No, no, no. Susan. Um, Susan. Una? Yes, yes, Susan. Uh, in the, her initial um, uh, opposition to this idea. Skepticism, skepticism. Yes, skepticism. She says it's not viable because, of course, we cannot do all these changes, but all we can do is probably all we have to do to, to show what the masses of the people want to do, want and uh, are able to do by by uh, understanding our power our simple power and just getting it organized not a big billboards uh, and all that it's good but to give the millions of people power with a well organized clicking on this thing and it will be so powerful but it's uh, the problem is to get our families and friends and everybody to uh, to understand the power game and our and our power in it. That's Can you it. get your friends to attend our meetings? I'm not sure what your name yeah. is. I'm sorry. Can you ask yeah. your friends? Either. Can the Palestinian lady it's, get her friends to attend? That's what we want. Is, uh, we want more Israelis and more Palestinians, especially it, Palestinians. We don't have many. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Barge in yeah, the... that is my wish and my uh, my effort. And I came here through uh, Michael Bloom here on the I see him on screen. He's a little channel in the, which is the uh, in Israel getting people to understand that the main thing we have to change here is our mental concept of what is going on here, and um, and we can all be. Uh, together and this is what's so special in this project thank you thank you thank you Ziva. great um I, I, at the end i want to ask you a, a question collectively about the development of the billboard i want to ask your opinion so let's go to shlomo and nasir and then fadwa hawaja uh sh sh you know what, let's hear from Fadwa first because you guys spoke. Let's have Fadwa and Tracy, new speakers, and then we'll go to the old speaker. Uh, Fadwa and Tracy. Okay. okay, good afternoon all. And I think I spent uh, two hours and a half listening to all the people through this Zoom. I think maybe from time to time I attend this uh, forum. I think the problem, I am, I am peace activist, long time. I was with Faisal Hosseini, 19 years in working with him. And I, I was in Oslo agreement period. I know all the details about the peace process. What happened one month ago, it's a disaster for all of us. Okay. I am not Hamas, but um, see what happened in Gaza. Okay. 
What happened in Gaza for the civilian people, this is the problem. You know, after the war stopped, all the people and the relatives of the people died and killed, all of them will be hit and came to create uh, violence inside them. And Gaza, it's not easy after the, the war stopped. The problem now, you know, we have to change the discourse in the Israeli mentality. Why, the, why this government came, the right, right wing, and what happened there, it's not, it's not uh, what we call, it's not a humanity, okay, to kill thousands of children and women, okay, in front of all the people. This is the problem, how to solve the how to stop this, how to stop that killing, how to, de to do the ceasefire, okay? This is the problem for us today. And uh, we in uh, the Palestinian side, a lot of women and young, they are looking forward to the peace, okay? But now there is the, the opposite. The people, they start upset and they start to think to be more violence, not to looking for peace. How to, how to change the mentality for people? How to, to keep the people uh, looking for peace for both of us? Because both of us will lose. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Fadwa. All right, let's go to Tracy and then, hi. Uh, and then Shlomo and then Nasiri. Tracy. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Um, I, I have been watching what's been going on and I've um, been listening to, there's a lot of Jewish people speaking up, this isn't it my name, Israel isn't it my name. Do you think that there could be a point or a vote where Jewish people around the world can vote whether Israel should carry on or not? Because we all realise, looking back at history, the, the leader what started this um, wasn't Jewish. It's been now done in uh, the Zionists have used the Jewish people and their name to start the state. So do you think that the Jewish people should have a vote whether Israel should carry on where it is, knowing that there's never going to be peace? I don't because think so. in the I, West I, Bank, I, I, I would in the West Bank, it. the Jewish, Muslims, and Christians live quite peacefully. I would be against it because that would be the ultimate politicization of religion, and uh, and you don't want to politicize religion. Jewish people around the world, and uh, Christian, Muslim, Jews are not different. And, and, and no, I know that. Yeah. Yes. So I, 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 I personally am against the politicization of religion, and uh, and I don't think that uh, Jewish people should have any priority uh, over non-Jews in making uh, political decisions regarding what's happening in Israel or Palestine. But that's what's happening. Well, isn't that the whole point of Israel? That it's a Jewish state. But exactly, Jews are standing exactly. up. This isn't yeah. in my name. Yeah. This is in our state. Exactly. And this is why we support a secular government for the people of Israel and Palestine, not a Jewish state, not a Palestinian state, uh, but a secular government that a government that Works has been created in 1947 rather than today, but it still can be done today. So, but, but what would the the area be called? Would it be called back to Palestine, or will it be called Israel, or it, will it whatever, be a joint? Whatever time? Israel will call itself Israel, the Palestinian will call themselves Palestinian, and the common government will decide what to call themselves. We have legislation on that. One of the okay. legislation we proposed is a holy land. <clears throat> That's fine. Yeah, Holy Land would be better because then that is for everybody. Yeah. But well, what will the maps of the world be classed in the area as? The map of the area is the West Bank, Gaza, and Israel from the river yeah, to but the Yeah, but under, under this proposal, because 
obviously that the there are Jews speaking out. It's uh, it's not in my name, so it shouldn't be called Israel. Palestine has now left to West Bank and Gaza. There's no map showing Palestine anymore, apart from obviously China. Um, so do you think a complete name change? No, like I said, Israel will have the prerogative to call itself Israel. Palestinians will have the prerogative to call Palestine. And the common government will decide on the name. And so if you have a soccer team, the soccer team could be for the Holy Land. It could be whatever they decide based on the constellation of the legislation. But what will, will, will Google Maps be? Because at the moment, it's state in Israel. Like I said, Israelis will call it Israel. Palestinian will call it Palestine. And uh, look, my, my parents didn't agree on, on a name for my sister. So okay. my mother called her one name and my father <laughs> called her another name. And I understand she, that. Yeah, yeah, and that happens. She, and that's how she lives for the rest of her life. We, so, well, do, do you think there should be a constitution or a vote? There what? is a constitution. You can, we propose yeah, a constitution. I, okay. So, do you think all the world maps should call it a holy land rather than Israel, Palestine? Even though the people can call it that, but the world map should just have one name that the constitution or people can vote on. They, they, I mean, it depends on the publisher. They can call it Holy Land, Israel, Palestine. They can call it Palestine, Israel, Holy Land, whatever they want. But it's not a major issue. It's, it's, it's okay. No problem. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Tracy. Let's go to, uh, I see, uh, Michael. Michael, you're a new speaker, so we're giving you priority. Yeah, hi. Thank you very much. <clears throat> can you hear me? Y yes, hi, Michael. Great. So um, this is very exciting, I must say, what's happening here. I'm personally in Israel. I'm uh, Israeli and uh, I have a podcast which was mentioned earlier. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the solution. I would like to spend most of my time promoting this because this already exists. So if we could continue doing this and get more people to join, the fact that I can sit here in front of uh, my brothers and sisters from uh, Gaza and from the West Bank is just mind blowing. I can't imagine anywhere else where I could possibly sit in front of in front of you guys and just, you know, have a, a decent conversation. This is absolutely beyond my wildest dreams. I think, Joseph, what you've done is incredible. And Thank this you. is it. Why waste any more time? Get everyone you know in this ASAP. Yes, and let's just um, well said. So I, what I would like to do is I would like to create a content as I, you know, I interview people every day. I could interview, I'd love to interview someone from the West Bank or from Gaza or from anywhere, Palestinians living in America, in England, in New Zealand, wherever, you know, we can create this content and, you know, and put it out there and, and, and just um, have a campaign about getting people into this thing that already exists. It's an amazing vehicle. Why, if it's, you know, why fix it? Let's just go with it and, and raise as much money as we can and awareness. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so I'd like to, if I could ask you later on, uh, Joseph, to just give me a few contact details of the people who spoke earlier, and I'll contact them and I'll ask them if they're happy to do a, a podcast together. Okay. Um, uh, Thank I you. Just want to. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, do you want me to tell you about the the new billboard suggestion before Nasir and Shlomo? Can you give me uh, Joseph? Well, the gentleman he spoke last, uh, he have a good point that we all come here. We don't know each other. I think we should always have connection to each other and uh, keep up with yeah. the work because yeah. if Absolutely. you put us together and we never each other, we don't know each other. So I'm willing to uh, reach out to him and bring all my energy under yeah. him because his name is Michael Bloom. Bloom. I'll share it. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Um, Shlomo, go ahead, and then Nasir. Yeah, my initial wish was to respond to the nonsense that Lynn is talking about. I don't even want to remember what he said. Uh, so uh, to stop Michael mentioning and... Lynn. He's not the enemy. He's 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 he gives us good conversation here. Yeah, maybe, but he's too. He's he's a, either totally ignorant or he's just lying. I'm, I have not decided yet, but. 
It's okay. Yeah. He, he, he adds some uh, pepper and salt to this. Maybe. I don't know. I wish. Um, I like what Michael. <laughs> Welcome, Michael Bloom. Uh, number one. Uh, number two, I fully agree with uh, what Fadwa was saying. To Tracy, uh, not in my name. This is complicated. Um, to remind you, most of the Zionists are not Jews, and most of the Jews are not Zionists. So something to keep in mind, and I can explain more if you like. Um, and yes, many, many Jews uh, are against what's going on, and for a good reason. This is uh, horrible. I mean, it is. I, I wake up in the morning, and I don't, I think, no, no, it was a nightmare. It, it, and no, it is not. They continue to bomb. They continue to kill children in, in Gaza. It's beyond me how the world is accepting it. You know, it's like what uh, it's like the Holocaust in uh, you know eight years ago. All the world just ah, okay, the Jews are going. You know, it's very similar to me. And uh, and there was a very interesting interview with a Holocaust survivor in Democracy Now, and she's eighty seven years old, and she and and, and you, you I'm I will try to get the link and send you. But you know, she said, "What is this madness?" It is a madness in front of our eyes going on, on and on and on and on and everybody accept. So he talked about how nice, how good are the Israelis that give the corridor to be people who have no water, no food, no, and they have to walk by and, and hospitals. I mean, should bombing hospitals become normal? This is like, well, excuse me. This is a, a, a war crime number one, and then so many war crimes done by Israel right now. And, and the question, of course, if in the context of the IPC is, of course, uh, I don't know, I don't understand the Israelis in, anymore. I, 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 it is it took, it's another conversation. So I'm not sure how many will vote, but we, we need to try. We need to try. Okay, I, uh, I will stop here and let uh, Nasir. All right, let's talk to Nasir. <clears throat> yeah, so Nathan asked me to open my camera, so I opened it. Um, hopefully he doesn't work for uh, Shabak or at least people that are using Face ID now to put us in databases, but that's okay. No <laughs> problem. You can't, nothing worse can happen to me that's already, well, I can actually, let me rephrase that. Yeah, worse can happen to me. I could have my building come flying, smashing down and crushing my entire family. So I guess, yeah, worse things can happen. So I wanted to say real quick, Una left, I wanted to acknowledge and, and, um, just, you know, tell her that what she said moved me about her grandmother experiencing the Holocaust and the fact that she maintained her humanity and was able to call out the horrors committed to other people in the name of uh, people who survived the Holocaust and then that were killed in the Holocaust, because that's that's very important to me. My original question was actually directed against our guest because um, I wanted to kind of like give her an opportunity to speak about aid, because aid is a very controversial thing. Zach Foster, who's a PhD, who has a PhD from Princeton um, three months ago, um, published a, an article about 72% of aid actually benefits the Israeli economy more so than the Palestinians because of transportation, wiring of money, buying supplies and stuff. But she's gone. We can't ask her that question. And I'm going to do something really remarkable. So you guys need to write down this date in history. Because and I know we're not supposed to mention his name, but I'm going to mention his name real quick. I'm going to agree with Len today. What is it? Uh, November 12th, 2023. I'm going to agree with something Len said. He said that we should never accept borders to be crossed by military men to kill civilians. I totally agree with Len on this case. He's absolutely 100% right. So why he cannot equate that with the what the IDF does, with what the settlers do, and I'm sure he'll come up with some reason saying, oh, because... They, um, there's terrorism, blah, 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 et cetera, and, and, and stuff like that. So um, no one here, nobody here wants, I, I think we're all good people. Deep down inside, we're all good people. We don't want civilians being killed. We don't want armies crossing borders, killing families. We, 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 we're all against it. I think we're all decent people. And I, but the question is here, and you know, like uh, um, the one that spoke earlier about the name of the state, you know what, call it cupcake. We all like cupcakes, right? Republic of Cupcake, Republic of Falafel, Republic of Hummus, whatever, everything that we all like, let's call it that. But like Brother Saeed said, the issue is not just recognition, it's, it's, it's equality. 
I want to be able to go where my family has lived for five, six, seven, who knows? I, I went back, we traced about six, 700 years of our history. And I know we have more, but that's as far as I can go back. I want to be able to go back. I want to be able to live. I want to be able to go to my home that, that's there right now that we can go, not as a, as a visitor, okay? I want to be able to that. This is, this is equality. This is not about what, you know, we, we can put Palestine on a map, but it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't mean recognition, equality, existence. This is what it says. So I think that the one thing that we lack is that, and I think on the Israeli part, it's worse. And this is what, like a lot of people criticize, like, why can't you Palestinians acknowledge what Hamas did was bad? It's a legit question. You know, why can't you just, just say, it fundamentally, 100% condemn it. And I can say, we can condemn it. We have condemned it. But we cannot ignore the fact that settlers this year have been responsible for the ethnic cleansing of at least eight towns, cities. They have killed dozens of people, not the army. I'm talking about the settlers. And the army has actually backed them up. Just today, there was a video released of army and the settlers going into areas near Tobas, near Hebron, near other cities. And they're doing this. And this is why we need, and maybe I'm going to write legislation for us here. I've done it before with Joseph. Joseph has allowed me to present legislation that we need legislation that is going to be applied to the Palestinian Authority, to the Israeli government, that extremism, there's zero tolerance for it. And we have to make effort. The Israeli army is responsible for security in the West Bank because they are the occupying force. They need to act to stop the extremists because if this happens, if you have an Israeli authoritary presence that stops the settlers, that deals with them for the terrorists that they are, then you're going to see a change in the hearts of Palestinians. Because right now, the Palestinian Authority is only seen as protect the Israelis, protect the Israelis. And this is going to never give them recognition. It's never going to give them acceptance within Palestinian society because they cannot say, we're doing this to preserve stability. But stability is not just protecting Israelis. Stability is protecting the, the, the Palestinians who live within the West Bank. We need security. Like Sister... Um, I'm going to mispronounce your name, Sharinia uh, was saying, I'm scared, we're scared because we have the army, we have some of the most powerful warships in the world on our shores right now, backing up Israel. And uh, the United States government is saying that Israel is not listening to us. You know, the dog is the one that wags his tail, the tail doesn't wag the dog. So this is a poor excuse that the United States is saying that we have no control. You're supplying the weapons, you're backing them up. So if we don't have this equality, if we don't deal with this extremism on both sides, then there's gonna, gonna be no, no mutual recognition, no reconciliation. All right, let's go to Abed. And Michael, I'd be happy to as well to talk with you. Um, Can you put your podcast please in the chat? Uh, um, send me an email, all the people who want to connect with Michael, please send me an email, say, Joseph, I wanna connect with Michael and I will give you Michael's email address. Um, oh, it as well. <laughs> okay, let's go to Abed and then Don, and then we're gonna conclude. Abed. Hello, Joseph. Hi. I am just shocked actually that when I heard Netanyahu on live TV bringing quotes from the Bible about the Amalekites, and you know how brutal the the description of that quote, killing children. Everybody, even animals. And he just get away with it in the front of the whole world. And I, and I just want to say that, very sadly, this is going to create a long-term reaction against the innocent Jewish people, globally. And I am calling on the Jews to say it's not in our name, you know, globally. Even here, especially in the United States. Yesterday, I received from a friend some pre-World War II, some of those articles and advertisement, how vicious they were against the Jews, you know, in, in Eastern Europe and Western Europe. It was sad, I'm telling you. And I have said before, that is not good for the Jews because they, there is going to be a tomorrow. And people, the Jewish people globally on all level, they should not say, not in our name, you do not represent us. 
And I think they should. Well, many, many do. Many do. Yes, yes, they did. They, I, I follow that, and that's good, but, but that's not enough. They really have to get rid of people like Netanyahu and move toward... I, I like your uh, IPC, but it's realistically speaking, the first step is to state, and then we start working on having these people that has been locally, have there is conflict, to bring them together uh, and hook gradually, and we go to your, and your step is the one, follow, follow the two-state solution. And then we go to the uh, final solution, which is Gideon, one state at one point in the future. And, and, and because we, the old ones, who created all these problems, uh, will die and the new, the new generation comes and will be in a different world, a new world then. But I hope that, uh, I don't want to say more because uh, Shlomo, Nasir, and all the speakers and you said more than what I would have said. All right, thank you, Abit. Let's go to Don. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you, everybody. This is a painful time, a, a rewarding conversation for almost three hours now. So thank you all for this important work. Thank you, Don. Um, thank you. Uh, Thank I you. voted uh, before, and I want to make clear personally, I'm completely 100% for a ceasefire immediately. But in the context of the simulation, I had stated why, Joseph, you asked me. And I said, because I think there needed to be more of a framework in that legislation. Maybe I should have brought that up before while we were discussing it. But I do want to jump on the second point I made, which Nasir just restated and was stated by others. And I stated at the time is the other part of that legislation was the stopping of extremism by all the parties. And Nasir, you mentioned the Israelis most certainly and the settlers and the West Bank and elements of the PA. And I do think it needs to recognize the extremism that came from Hamas too. I mean, I know it's a difficult conversation, but we have to get this up in the air where we can all see but we it. We have recognized it many times, but we're asked only to recognize it. Okay, I appreciate that. And I, and I say that as one who's a peace activist and completely for a ceasefire immediately. Thank you. Well, when you proposed the uh, legislation against uh, extremism, oh, I think it has to be defined. What does it mean, extremism? To me, the use of religion as part of the agenda is the foundation of extremism. But We'll have you know, to think about it in order to make it. Uh, the other, the other thing, the other thing was that, like, for example, like people that say they support a two-state, like you know, our friend who is not here, that we're not supposed to mention his name. If you ask him about the two-state solution, sorry, Michael, and I and I wanted to mention this real quick, he's going to tell you the two-state solution is Israel from the river to the sea and Jordan to be the Palestinian state. So look, the devil is in the details with these yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. And. He said that a millions of times, you know, San Ramos gave us this land and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So this okay, is, this is to, you know, this is, Michael, you know, did you want to speak again? I would like to just one sentence. No, but Sean, give Sean, and Sean is a new speaker. Okay, uh, Joseph, uh, can I just ask one question? It's, it's, a, it's a hypothetical question. Okay, you know, Israel and Palestine are, uh, are against each other. And uh, Israel uh, is not at peace with Iran, Syria, or Lebanon, right? But hypothetically, if if Israel made peace with Iran and Iran made peace with Israel, do you think that's going to force Israel and Palestine to come more closer together and make peace? That's my question. If they made uh, allies with the Lebanon, Syria, or any of them, that will uh, get uh, Israel to say, hey, I, we need to come peace with Palestine because their neighbors now are friends too. So that's that's my question. Thank you. All right. Um, no, so I, have I, I, don't, one I, I don't think that I don't think that would happen because when, when you consider the Abraham Accords, when Israel made uh, agreements with the, the Gulf states, you know, did that uh, help in the situation uh, uh, with Israel and Palestine? No, it didn't, unfortunately. I just have one sentence. Yeah, I, I'd like to say one sentence. Oh, can yeah, I to... say mine? Oh, sorry, Slomo. Can I say my one sentence first? I mean, I'm so sorry. F forgive me. Uh, people mentioned extremism. Can you can you hear me, Joseph? Yeah. 
okay, we in the West for decades, for many, many years, have always described terrorism as what they do to us. We have never thought of it as being what we do to them. Right. End of story. Thanks, Lenin. Yeah. Because yeah, okay, we are one, narcissistic. One okay, let's go to Shlomo. That's beautiful. One That's sentence. beautiful. One sentence to, to uh, Don. You talk about extremists. Uh, when Netanyahu talked about Amalek, there is something more extreme than that. Yeah, Hamas are babies compared to, to, to Netanyahu and his friends and Ben Gvir and all of that. They are at least not racist. If they want to replace Israel, I understand them. If I were them, I probably would like to do exactly the same. However, they don't, they don't use this language of complete annihil annihilation of the others. And, and the Israelis do. So, excuse me, what is extreme anymore? Yeah, I, 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 I agree in that, concept, but my point was extremism by all the parties, that it's important that we make that statement. But it's not as extreme as just like Shlomo finished. This is, this is, it cannot, Hitler cannot be worse than that. <laughs> Let me say it. Hitler cannot be worse than what this guy said <laughs> in front of the whole world. All right, everyone, um, we'll see you again in the next simulation. I, I want to thank you all. We had a, thank a you. very, very- Hey, hey Michael, can you share your podcast in the chat? I asked you twice before we close out. Thank Sorry, my, my podcast is in Hebrew. I have one in Hebrew and one in English and one in Russian. So the best thing is really for I would the point of the podcast is going to be, I mean, it's going, it could be anything you want, but I'll tell you something important for me these days is being an Israeli Jew who has woken up to the fact that my I was brainwashed uh, to be afraid of Arabs. Mainly, uh, I was told that I was born into a place that is surrounded by Arabs who are my enemies and they hate me and they want to kill me. Nobody talked about the Israeli Arabs because they didn't have to, because if all the Arabs around me are bad, then obviously the ones within our, uh, my own country would be bad. I should stay away from them. So I've been promoting um, cooperation and friendships between uh, Israeli Arabs <clears throat> and Jews like myself. And I, I would love to do the same thing. Uh, I need help because the Israeli Arabs basically are very afraid. It's very, very hard to get an Israeli Arab to, to agree to be interviewed. Now, how can I soften the hearts of my brothers, the Israeli Jews, and show to them that, you know, Arabs are people and they have opinions and they're very logical and they make sense. Uh, you know, and they're human um, if they won't agree to come on the podcast, the Israeli Arabs. So by having any kind of Arabs, I mean, uh, you know, for, for West Bank, Gaza, any other country all over the world would be amazing because we could have these conversations. We can actually free up this space here just to stick to the you know, to the to the rules and simulations rather than make this uh, like a, a place where you have debates and podcasts. We can actually make podcasts instead of having the podcast in this uh, in, uh, on this forum. So to cut a long story short, if I give you my Israeli podcast, you won't be able to contact me. Uh, I can put my email address. It'll be easier. So you can no, send I'm just me interested in listening to it. Yeah. I just want to listen to what your your one of your it's podcasts in it's oh, in you Hebrew. Don't one, you don't have and one in why, English. Why, you, why don't you extend uh, your uh, podcast to English and have all of us? Because well, just... we consider Palestinians and we can do a lot of work. Uh, of course. Let's open a new one. Let's call it something that will represent all of us. I don't the know homeland. Why. Let's call it the homeland. The Holy Land. The Holy Land. Yeah. That's it. Oh, I just want to say I am not. I'm against the two-state solution. I would love to have a one-state solution on all of the I'm whole the land. Same thing. I'm the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. Let's talk about oh. that. Um, so yeah, uh, my email will be. Uh, um, Joseph has my email. Whoever wants to go, we could do panels. We can have three, four people together. Yeah. Two, two, three Palestinians experts, really produce high quality stuff. So yeah, send me an email. I'll send you Michael's uh, uh, email. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you very much. So could our next topic be what Michael's suggesting? One state solution. Yeah, absolutely. If someone wants to uh, come up with legislation about the one state, we could uh, present that as an option. We have the two state option on uh, December 17. Yes, absolutely.
we can discuss. Michael, could, you do, do, could you do that, Michael? Do, do what? Sorry. Present do legislation in favor of one state. Yeah, of course. I do. I'm, I'm happy to do anything. Yeah. Okay, Joseph, we have a volunteer. All right. And, and Natan, uh, my invitation to you is still standing to be. Yeah, a, but I'm very extreme. I live in Jerusalem. I came in Aliyah. My uh, family was destroyed in the Holocaust. Uh, okay. Yeah, we want, Sorry, I'm very extreme. We want everyone, regardless of their. I have children who live in the occupied territories and grandchildren. We want everyone, regardless of their political. Uh, and I visited Aza. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I was in Yamit. Yeah. So All right. What? We want we want to have speakers, and we want to see what is your objection. Uh, or we want to stress test oh, our yeah. formula for peace against your political opinions. That's all. I have to hear from Shlomo first. He he's the best speaker that I heard here. Yes. All right. Okay, Tony. Did you wait, want wait, to say something, it, yeah, Tony? Are you saying that sarcastically? Yeah. No, no, no. I really think I think Shlomo was very articulate and very clear about what he thinks and bases it on on evidence. Uh, I think we need a few more people like Shlomo. There are a few people here, and Saeed and uh, Abid and Nasir. Uh, I think I, was I delightful think to clone, be able to I, hear. I think we should clone Shlomo. Uh, we come like, together. I, I cannot compete. <laughs> I will be in the dust with the Shlomo. <laughs> All right, Tony. Uh, let's give Tony an opportunity because he hasn't spoken Nat yet. Oh, Nathan, are you? Do you follow Yehuda Hakohen? Uh, no, okay. I don't have just any the thing information thing. about uh, him. I just like wait, the wait, idea wait, wait. Please give Tony a, an opportunity to speak. Thank you I, very I much. Just, I just like the idea of the podcast and uh, oh, which Tony? Maybe we should call Tony it, Lowe. Uh, yeah, maybe we should call it uh, Cupcakes Among Friends or something. I don't think. <laughs> Tony Lowe, please. I've I've been listening to this uh, uh, debate. I guess you can call it for three hours now. Um, <clears throat> the one point that I would like okay. to make is that if you don't know in detail the history of what happened over the last 75 years, it's very difficult to um, make a plan for the future. And I'm not saying we have to be stuck in the history, but you have to kind of know where everybody is coming from. And um, I'm I have been reading this book. It was written partially by one of the speakers that you had uh, a couple of weeks or three weeks ago. Yeah. And it's a very well researched book and I do recommend it because it's it, it really goes step by step what happened, um, what the, the, the problem with the UN, amazing problem with the UN, how just about everybody who's had a, a finger into this thing has screwed up. And you, you need to try to rebuild where we could go, given all of that. And there is, a, you know, you can't cut yourself off from history. You have to know what it is, and then you can go around it. So that's my point. Thank Who you. is the author of that book? I, I, I would love, can I have a, an answer for the gentleman who spoke about history? Uh... And these words, oh, okay. She, this is... Adi Schwartz and Einat Wilf, who was on this uh, debate a few weeks ago. Yeah, this is a simulation. It's not a debate. Can you hear me? Joseph, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, if I, I just, re regarding this history, my friend, we brought this history thing a lot, and we brought some Palestinian, they want to recognize the, uh, the, the history, and they want to recognize the suffering. Today, what's happening in Gaza is worse than the Nakba. More people got killed, more destruction happening. What we need to do today, we need to come together, as people and stop putting the history and uh, what what you owe me, what I owe you, you have to recognize me, I have to recognize you, you have to understand that the only way to do this is by accepting the fact that we both exist and live together of the day and stop the extreme on both sides. Because today's history, today gonna be in the history that the wars they came in the, in the Israel and the Palestinian together. So I'm telling you, we have to start looking at different way instead of us reading the history. Read, the, read it now, read what happened today. Thank you. All right. Yeah, okay, guys. 
Thank and the you numbers, so just, to, just to say real quick, the numbers that Saeed is talking about as far as Nekba, we have more than double the numbers of displaced people than the Nekba. Nekba displaced 700,000. We already have 1.6 million people displaced. The Nekba war caused death of about, it was about 15, 16,000. We're already at 11,000 within one month. We are, we are, we have gone beyond Nekba. This is like Nekba double size, whatever you want to call it. All right. Thank you so much for participating. Hopefully you'll come to our next simulations. And I appreciate all of you coming. And uh, I thought it was the conversation was very good today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.